Hello everybody! Welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator live stream. I hope you're all doing well. Happy Tuesday. We don't usually say Happy Tuesday. We usually say Happy Monday. But uh, as you all know, had a uh, birthday to attend to yesterday. So we're live again today. Cannot miss a day for you guys. Love hanging out with you guys, doing a flight sim. So welcome back. Hope everybody is doing well. Skyworker, good to see you. Rich's World, good to see you. Gary P, welcome. Aiden, good to see you. Dom, good to see you. Chris Clark, welcome back. Quick match, good to see you. Uh, Leonard Grant, good to see you. Finland Guy, welcome back. John Zander, good to see you. Yuckfu, good to see you. Ryan, good to see you. Captain Will's in the house, good to see you, man. Troa, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Aculus, good to see you. Greg Elwa, welcome back. Jugal Stump, good to see you. Bomb Tech, good to see you. Diamond Mike, welcome back. Vine Fortuna, good to see you. Tenure to Mobile, welcome back. Bomb Tech, I think I already got you. Good to see you, my friend. Um, Kyle Lewis, good to see you. Kango, good to see you. Average Aviator, welcome back. Captain Swede, good to see you. SF Aviation, welcome back. Captain Ennis, good to see you. Uh, Charlie, good to see you. Welcome back. JR, good to see you. Jacob, good to see you. Welcome back, friends. Some Air Canada Ops today. It's been a while since we've done any Air Canada Ops within Canada. Um, when we do do Air Canada Ops or WestJet Ops or something like that, usually we're out on the West Coast. Usually we're doing like Vancouver to Calgary to Edmonton or something. Um, going to mix it up today. We're going to be doing Montreal to Toronto, back to Montreal, the two biggest cities uh, in Canada, right up there with Vancouver and Calgary. Um, but it should be a great day of flying. Very excited for this one. Uh, always love flying Air Canada. Love being in the Phoenix A320, and I love flying in and out of these airports. So uh, it should be a great day of flying. If anybody does want to join, please feel free. We are on the VATSIM network. Anybody can join. Uh, really looking forward to it. Aiden, good to see you, man. Uh, how long will this stream be? I would say probably around three and a half, four hours, our, our usual stream length. 
nothing crazy long. It's about an hour each way, an hour and five minutes on the way, and I think just under an hour on the way back because of the tailwind. Um, so we should be done in normal time, three and a half, four hours, something like that. Time to grab a beer. Uh, the live is starting. Adrian, good to see you, man. Welcome back. Hope you're doing all. Well. Ray, good to see you, dude, as well. Hope you're having a great week so far, man. Good to see you. Just departed Montreal for MGGT Sunwing, long five-hour flight. Nice. Very cool, dude. Cap, do you have Phoenix V2? I don't have Phoenix V2. No. <clears throat> I don't think anybody has Phoenix V2 apart from, like, the Phoenix and the, the beta testing teams. I see MK Studios doing the LaGuardia announcement uh, in their new Discord they created today. Hmm. Interesting. Are we sure that it's actually MK Studios, Dom? I mean, I'm, I'm down for that as long as performance. Performance, 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 right, Dom? Um, I gotta say, like, I love the Montreal scenery, but the performance here at this airport is a little bit suspicious in some places. Unfortunately, if we're going to be taking New York scenery, we got to we gotta make sure that we're, you know, performance is number one. Um, even as it is right now with the feel there, LaGuardia, it's not very good, but, um, yeah. Um... I just bought the Phoenix. Why is it so much harder to land than the fly-by-wire? Yeah, it's completely different, man. Completely different. This runs an external flight model. That would be, without going into, like, crazy in-depth, Mike, that's exactly why. Uh, this this aircraft is running ProSim, uh, which, like, if you're, if you're a home cockpit builder, if you have, like, a 737 home cockpit, you would use the same systems and flight model and stuff, so it's ProSim flight model. It's very different than the in-game flight model. Um, I prefer the Phoenix. I prefer flying the Phoenix. To me, it feels more sturdy, heavy. Um, but again, everybody's going to have their own difference of opinion, right? Uh, let's make like sheep and get the flock out of here. Yes, I agree. You're one of the best channels for flight sims out there. Thank you, Captain Ass. I appreciate the kind words, man. Really do appreciate that. Uh, we've got uh, Trivix. Thanks so much, man, for becoming a business class member. Huge no floaties to you, dude. Thank you very much for your support. Welcome to the green team. I hope you enjoy your stay here, man. Custom emoji standing out in chat with that beautiful green name. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Um, ba -ba -ba. Mr. McDo is here. Good to see you, man. Welcome back. 3MS. Good to see you, man. Mike Jones. What's up, dude? Aiden Aviation. Good to see you, man. Did you see the Fly-By-Wire release in the E380 cockpit preview? I did. Um, yeah. Again, though, Aiden, man, I got I got to be 100% honest with you, man. I'm, 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 I'm up to here with the previews and 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 screenshots i i i don't care anymore man <laughs> i don't i sound so jaded but it's just listen man it's been three and a half years of flying the same basically two three airplanes um i'm 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 over the teasers i'm over the pictures i could care less uh just let me know when the product is available great news we should have a new airplane soon tfdi sent over the nda agreement for me to get my md11 so we should have a new airplane. I'm hoping like within the next couple of weeks, we should have an MD-11 to fly. So um, that's good news, Chad. At least we'll have something. We'll have a proper heavy airplane, <clears throat> be able to do some cool ass cargo routes, maybe some retro passenger ops and stuff like that. Um, so that's moving along forward. So that's great news. Hopefully, we'll like I said, we'll add another another aircraft to our hangar, uh, and we don't just have to sit there and stare at pictures of what will be in future considerations. But uh, yeah, recently I've had GSX bug uh, I me mean, several times, especially when pushing back. Uh, have you had any issues? Not really, man. Uh, one, make sure that you have have a. a um, a script for every airport that you have that you're flying out of um, and to make sure that it is up to date make sure it's all ready to go so yeah what runways did you plan to sim brief to fly you uh, I have no clue man I don't even know what sim brief gave me yet I haven't even taken a look uh, sim brief gave me six right and 15 left well, I can tell you we're not landing 15 left in Toronto because they don't land on the one fives anymore so it's either going to be two three two four or uh, zero 05 or zero 06. We'll, we'll look at the weather here. We're going to jump inside the aircraft now. We're going to get things rocking and rolling. Uh, first thing is first. Let's go to the overhead. Let's go and get our battery switch one and two to the on position. We'll wait for that. That's good. We'll get our external power on as well. It's going to bring the aircraft to life. Beautiful. Let's go in deers left side, right side, and center. Bump those all to the nav position. Good. We'll flip over our cap on. Good. Ground control can come on. Crew supply can go on. Nav and logo lights can go on. APU master start switches on. Go ahead and get some overhead brightness uh, on there. No smoking to the auto position. We'll arm our emergency exits, and we'll go ahead and bump our cargo heat to the aft position. Beautiful. That all looks good to me. Great. Let's come down here. Let's spend some time on the electronic flight bag. <clears throat> Pardon me. Let's go to our Phoenix tab. Pop this open here. Uh, is the TFRP good? Which ones are those? 
Are those the uh, the cheaper Thrustmaster pedals? I think that's what they are. Biohazard, what's up, man? Good to see you, dude. Is the audio bugging for anybody else? Uh, I don't know. Anybody have an audio bugs? Maybe restart the stream? Definitely shouldn't have any audio bugs. Although we do have weird audio bugs that happen sometime. But uh, yeah, just refresh the stream if you're having any weird audio bugs. Jody, what's up, man? <coughs> Good to see you. Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Uh, YUL to YYZ, looking good, beautiful. We're gonna go to our mass and balance tab here today. 174 passengers going over to Toronto, 2,700 kilograms of cargo, and we've got about 6, 6,100 kilograms of fuel. Let's go ahead and load aircraft. We're gonna go instant because we are boarding via GSX as we saw that outside. Uh, beautiful, cool, let's go down to the McDo. Let's start plugging in some numbers now. Let's go to the FMG tab. We're gonna go to our knit ref tab. We're gonna do our knit request. Give that a couple seconds to run through all of its stuff. Gaps, my home airport, YUL, thank you very much. Hey, man, no problem. I love flying in and out of Montreal, dude. I don't fly in and out of Montreal enough, to be honest with you. So uh, anytime I get to fly in, in and out of Montreal, I am a, uh, I am a happy boy. Uh, Air Canada 401 is our flight number and call sign today. Um, let's go to our B page. We'll plug in some numbers here quickly. So we've got our zero fuel weight. It's going to be uh, 60.7, we'll call it, in 31.8. 60.7 slash 31.8 good block fuel for today's flight we just said it it was 6.1 so we'll go ahead and bug that up there 6.1 beautiful let's go to flight plan <clears throat> let's see what the weather is doing here for us go to montreal go to weather Metar report is showing winds calm hey we like that winds calm um if that's the case i'm going to take what did simbrief give me simbrief gave me six right for taxi purposes, <clears throat> I'm going to accept that. Six right for departure. We're going to be on uh, the Montreal 2 departure, which is basically just radar vectors. We'll insert that, good, and then it's going to be radar vectors direct bob key. So probably 3,000 feet left turn direct bob key. That's what we'll plan. Beautiful. And then let's go to Toronto. Let's go to arrivals. Let's see what the weather is doing here in Toronto. Let's go to weather. Beautiful. Winds are 150 at 9. I mean, shit, if there's nobody online, I guess we can land runway 15. We haven't landed 15 in Toronto in, God, I don't even know how long. It is a cool runway. It is a cool approach. You can see here it takes us basically downtown, and then we head north, and then we make a, a vectored left turn. They do have two runways, but you can see why they use... Um, Toronto is an extremely busy airport, probably Canada's busiest airport. The reason that they stopped using the three threes and one fives, if you've flown in and out of Toronto, I've been flying out of there my entire life. Uh, up until about 10 years ago, three, three and 15 were almost exclusive. Three, three left, three, three right for arrivals, one five left, one five right. It, they were almost exclusive. About 10 years ago, they switched ops uh, because it offered three runways instead of two. So they've got runway two, three. Usually if you're parking up here in the north, you'll end up getting runway two, three for arrival or runway five. And then you've got runway six left and six right and two, four left and two, four right. They actually just did major renovations on uh, two, four right and six left. Last time I flew into Toronto, that runway was closed, actually, and they were running five and six right ops. Uh, with winds like that, <clears throat> 150 at nine, okay, fine, we'll take runway 15. We'll be on the Ragged 5 arrival. So we'll go ILS 15 left, good. We'll be on the Ragged 5 arrival. We'll find that on our list here. Ragged 5, good. We're going to go with the Tukir transition. Uh, no, I lied to you, the Torni transition. And our approach via is today, uh, on Gox. If we look at on Gox, on Gox should be uh, approach ILS 15 left, should be the final waypoint. Pin U. Uh, da, 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 1 5 left on Gox. Okay, cool. So, what we'll do, we'll insert that. Wonderful. Looking good. Let's go back to our net ref tab. Cost index is going to be 5. We're looking for a cruise level of 320. 32,000 feet. It actually wanted me to use a cost index of 18. We'll put 18 once we get up to cruise altitude. We'll go with 5 on the climb. It's not a very long flight, so uh, that'll be perfectly fine throughout our climb process. Uh, Aiden, celebrating 16 months. Huge no floaties to you, man. Thank you very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it, man. That is incredibly kind. Thank you, thank you, thank you, man. 30.8, you added an extra 100 kilos. Where are we looking? 31.8, what did I say? 
what did I do? I mean, I'm not too concerned about 100 kilos, but what did I do? 60.7, 31.8, we're good. You always want to round up. So this number here, 60.65, you just round that number up because we're closer to 700 than we are 600. You round that number up. So 60.7 because we are higher and 31.8, I, I don't know. Unless you're talking about something completely different, but Gap, you see what's going on. Uh, this today's flood bar released a draw dropping screenshot of the 380 and PBGD said they will be demonstrating a secret project on their forums. Crazy, yeah. I said 30.8. Well, it's 31.8, and I, I put in 31.8, so whether I said it or did it, but anyways, it's all good. Everything's fine, man. Hey, Cap, can you show your sensitivity settings for the TM rudder pedals? Feels kind of weird on takeoff. Uh, Eduardo, I can show you my controls. Um, I feel like rudder pedals, though, man, it, it's, it's going to be it's going to be how you like it. Uh, I don't think I have any. Yeah, I, I have basically. Oh, no, I do. I have a 45 minus 45 on the sensitivity, 20 percent reactivity. I find a lot of people that are struggling with like over like with things being oversensitive and stuff. Just uh, try to try to play with your reactivity. You can obviously add sensitivity curves as well. Uh, basically, with a sensitivity curve, that just means it's going to take more. Uh, you know, more force on the pedal, pedal to get the, the aircraft to move left or right, but the reactivity is huge as well. Um, so yeah, if you don't mind, what are my sensitivities on the Phoenix? Uh, the sensitivities for the Phoenix are exactly how Phoenix says that they should be in the Phoenix Discord. Uh, minus 29 with a 3% dead zone. That is what uh, Phoenix says things should be on the... Uh, um, on, on that with a reactivity of 100%. So um, that's what they look like. Anyways, that, that's exactly how Phoenix says that uh, things should be. Uh, if you're on the Phoenix Discord, if you go look on the Phoenix Discord, that's exactly how they said that they should. Cap, why are you always using the two fours IRL, not the sixes? That's okay, man. There's nobody online today. Uh, I don't want to do the marathon taxi out to two four right. I'm going to take six right. It's perfectly fine. I do not mind. If we do the return flight, we can do the two fours on the return. 99% of the time, they're landing on the two fours. It's very rare that they depart or land on the sixes. Uh, but yeah, like I said, man, no ETC online, none of that fun stuff. So we're just gonna we're just gonna send it, man. Uh, instead of a 20 minute taxi, we're gonna cut that down to a like four minute taxi. So PMDG said they might show a secret project at FS Weekend. That's all I heard. FS Weekend is that the one that's in the Netherlands? This uh, coming up in March, right? March. Yeah, coming up in March, I think. <clears throat> Your Phoenix cockpit looks different. Uh, nope. I can confirm that it, it's definitely not different. It's the exact same cockpit that you have and that every other Phoenix owner has. Can confirm. Uh, Any we'll decent swap. scenery for Palmer? LEPA? Adrian, huge no floaties to you, man. Thank you very much for your support with the 100 Danish Kronen. <clears throat> uh, appreciate it. Sorry, Norwegian Kronen. Why do I always say Danish? Norwegian Kronen. Thank you for the support, man. I really do appreciate it. L-E-P-A. I feel like <clears throat> there is. Lipa. Who do I have? Lipa. Uh, apparently, I don't have any Lipa scenery. That seems weird. I feel like we've flown into there. Lipa. Uh, I have Just Sim, Palma de Mallorca, Just Sim, I knew that I had scenery installed, I was looking on the wrong drive, <coughs> pardon me, Palma de Mallorca by Just Sim, yeah, he got not going to be in stream today, my grandpa just passed away this morning, a couple hours ago, but busy with all the stuff, uh, I'll be back when it's chilled out, Captain Lee, take care man, I'm sorry to hear about that dude, my condolences to you and the family buddy. my condolences, my friend, go take care of life and all the fun stuff that happens with that, appreciate you man. Um, just know, guys, if things like that happen, you don't need to come and stream, and you, you can always send me a DM if you're not comfortable mentioning stuff like that, or, uh, you know, also, you don't have to report that you're not going to be at stream and stuff like that. I don't expect people to be here every day. I don't expect people to be here every week, so it, it's completely okay, man. It's, uh, you know... <clears throat> he kept my nose wheel goes left after we left joystick. Uh, calibrate your joystick? I don't, I don't know, man. That's an odd one. I haven't heard of that one before. 
Something sounds like it's bugging out. Um, I agree with you. I'm sick of all the screenshots of the planes. I just want a release date. It, 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 it's just like, man, it's just so tiring after like, you know, you get your hopes up like so many times. You see a screenshot, you see a ping, you see an announcement. You're just like, oh shit. You know what I mean? Wow. We got, we actually got a release of an airplane and then you go and it's just another screenshot for another six months of screenshots. It's like, God damn, dude don't care anymore you know what I mean like I feel like it's just I feel like at this point we're playing screenshot simulator we don't actually get any of these airplanes we just get screenshots of them chat we get screenshots and promises that something will eventually come and it's like god damn dude it's been how many months I mean you know listen I I understand that there's delays in this industry and I understand that the simulator is constantly evolving and changing but like you know at some point you got to release the project and you gotta whether it's you know hey, we're releasing with this and we've got some issues and we're hopefully we're going to be able to do, you know, we'll get some patches out and stuff. But like, yeah. Uh, one slash down 0 0.4 on the trim and our flex temp, I believe, was 62 degrees. It was 62 degrees. All right, cool. We got our flex temp in. We're boarded. We're looking great. EPU is on the startup. We'll jump outside. We'll listen to the EPU spooling up. Why does development take so long nowadays? It's because the in-depth systems. Uh, I, yeah, G Mark. There's a lot going on. Yeah. How do you change the trim in the Phoenix? Uh, you should have a button. Trivix, you should have a button assigned to either your joystick or whatever it is. If you don't have a button assigned to it, um, you can always just grab the wheel. So if you look at your trim wheel, you can always just, I think you can grab it and move it. Can you not? No. So you're going to have to assign, you're going to have to assign trim up or trim down or something like that. Yeah. How do you calculate the flex temp when you don't have the Phoenix? Uh, Aiden, <clears throat> flex temperatures, honestly, man, I, I usually just go with a flex temp of either like 65 or like 50. If you have a short runway and you need the engines to work a little bit harder, go with a lower cost index. You can go with the cost index as low as I think 35 or something like that. Um, if you have a longer runway, weather is good, you don't have any contamination on the runway, you can go with a higher cost index. Basically, cost index is just like a wear and tear protection system for the engines. Uh, simulating it, you know, yeah. You can move the wheel with your mouse wheel. Okay, well there you go. I can't for some reason, it doesn't seem to want to do it. I don't know if I have like a I might not have like the button properly or something, but um, yeah. Arrivals now on 23 and 24. Yeah, like I said, man, there, there's nobody online today. There's no controllers online, so we're just going to do whatever we want, man. Uh, we're just going to land right into the wind. It's okay. I'm not. I'm not too concerned about today. <clears throat> if controllers come online, we can start. You know, we can start planning for different runways and stuff like that. But honestly, I don't. Uh, with with there being no ETC online, I could care less today as far as. Uh, uh, choosing the real runways we're just going to do whatever is easiest you know what i mean no you can't move it with your mouse i can't either you need to use the side stick hmm i wonder if you like uh, i wonder if you have one of the other remember that the mouse control has a couple different options within microsoft flight simulator so i'm wondering if you have like uh if you can manipulate some to do weird things um prepare for pushback and departure good let's go to no we don't need to worry about that let's go to our uh, ground services, that is extremely loud. Uh, chocks and cones, the GPU is going bye-bye. Good. Head back here and pull up our departure performance. Good. They are ready for pushback. Beautiful. Looking good. The mouse control only works after engine start. Ah, there you go. Thank you. Praying you land on the 15s with the approach is beautiful over the departures too. It is, yes. Uh, departing out of the 15s is gorgeous, man. Yeah, we were flying into Toronto the other day and somebody was, uh, when did we fly into Toronto? We did uh, the A300, Louisville to Toronto. And uh, we had a bunch of guys landing on runway 15, so that was pretty cool. Arrival is online at YYC, rip your 15 approach. Is it? I'm not getting anybody yet, but they may pop up. We'll see. Do you think I should buy the Thrustmaster TCA Airbus Edition? If you fly Airbus a lot, it is a fantastic product. Yes, I thoroughly enjoy my TCA Airbus lineup. Yeah. How was your Monday? So, sir, hope you had a good day uh, with the fiance. Yeah, it was a good day, man. It was a good day. I did lots of work for her. Did some stuff at the farm, went out for dinner. Um, was good, man. It was a good time. 
typically only use the Phoenix E320. I find that when I taxi, the front wheel slides around like it's on ice. Is there any way to solve this? I, I mean, you sh turning the aircraft, you cannot go above 10 knots, otherwise it'll start sliding. I don't notice it's sliding any other positions, but uh, um, I hate when they do this. Facing west? No, we want facing east. Release parking brakes, please. Good, park brake released. Commencing push. All right. All Beacon clear. lights on. Start at will. Seatbelts on. Clear left, clear right. Engine mode selector to the start position. Did you see Beyond ATC pricing? What's your take on it? You want my honest opinion? I, I, I don't think it's going to work out for them, man. I think it'll be, uh, I'm going <clears throat> six months to a year before it's like the, that whole live service is gone. I, I don't know, man. I don't know, dude. I, uh, I, I was kind of scared that this was going to happen. I was kind of scared that they were going to price themselves completely out of the market. They're charging as much for this program as the simulator costs. How long is it before Microsoft does something similar now once they see that if this is successful or something, right? I don't know, man. Uh, I, 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 I want to like the project. I, I, re I really want to like the product. I really want to like the project. I really want to support the project. But at $60 base price, then you have to buy premium minutes? Fuck me, dude. That's not going to fly, dude. Uh, again, this kind of just reiterates... I, I don't know why flight sim products are priced so expensive. I understand that everybody wants to make a dime and everybody wants to make a dollar and everybody deserves to make a dollar. Developers deserve to get paid for their time. But this is just, I mean, again, dude, it takes the cake of just like you're, you're shooting yourself in the foot before it's even, I don't know, man. I don't know. It just, it, it just, just seems way too expensive for me. Way too expensive. I understand, though, people are so excited about Beyond ETC, it's more excited to have controllers on VATSIM. Well, that's what I'm saying, dude. That's exactly it. For $60, you're, you're basically... Like, come on, man. It, at the end of the day, it's AI ETC. I don't care how good it is. It's still AI ETC. There's going to be bugs. There's going to be issues. There's going to be things that just don't work, like if you were talking to a real person. I don't know how, at the end of the day... You can literally install and download VATSIM for free, speak with other real people, fly with other real people. Why you would choose Beyond ATC instead of flying on VATSIM? Sure, I get the argument that VATSIM isn't online all the time. Maybe you do your flights in the evening and there's no ATC available or anything like that. I get that, I understand that. But again, this is where I think they're just pricing themselves out of this market. It's $60 for the base package plus having to pay for premium minutes. That's crazy, dude. That's crazy, man. Like, I, I, I've i told you guys all along that I, the only way I was going to be supporting this project is if it came at a decent price tag. And I'm sorry, man, $60 plus premium minutes is not a decent price tag. And like I said, please don't misinterpret what I'm saying. I, I do believe that all the developers deserve to be paid for their time and the work that they're doing. But if, if you have to charge this much for the work that you're doing, I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, it's just too much, man. It's uh, it's too much. Too much, dude. Let's be real. Traffic is always going uh, to go around. I don't know, man. I don't know, dude. Yeah. Thrustmaster bamboozled me. They didn't give me a cable with my TCA Quadrant Boeing Edition. Are you sure? I would send a nice little message to the Thrustmaster team, and I'm sure they'll get one sent over to you. Uh, that's odd, though. You see their QC controls quite well. I've never heard of that one before. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know, man. Listen, dude, I wish I wish them all the best. But again, um, I, I, I have to reiterate this and I have to put this into a... In, into. I think at the end of the day, you really have to... Oh boy, that's not some good texture bleed through right there, chat. Uh, at the end of the day, I think the main thing here... Jesus, dude, the whole airport is just... Ugh, they got to fix this DX12. It's been like really bad for me lately. It usually never causes me any issues, but it's been really bad lately. That day, I might go into the beta just to get rid of that shit for this week, so I'm not flying in it. I might join the beta. Um, 
you, you have to think also, please, I think we have to put this into consideration. Think about the people that are not comfortable flying on Vatsim. What, what, what comes to your mind when you think about people that aren't comfortable? I think of people that maybe just aren't too comfortable with their flying skills, but in my brain, the one thing that sticks out is younger people. People that aren't necessarily, they don't want their voice heard on the network, they're either scared because they're too young, they don't know enough. That's like, that's who I would assume that this product would be geared towards, would be the, the younger generation, the younger crew of kids. I just don't see it happening. I don't see the kids spending $60 on a, a voice ATC package or like convincing their parents that uh, the voice ATC package is something that they need. I don't know, man. I just, I, I feel like it's just set up for, set up for a disaster. What's premium minutes? Um, so the way that it works is you have like the default AI ETC. Um, in order to get like premium minutes, so like different voices, um, different other things, um, you have to pay for premium minutes. That's essentially what they are, so. DX12 was causing problems for me. I really haven't had any issues, Tyler. Uh, this is really the only issue that I have is the bleed through textures, uh, which is fixed. Like I said, if you opt into the new SIM update, SIM update 15, uh, those, these issues aren't there. Um, so I may opt into the beta for this week to see. So is the TFPR port, uh, on the TCA quadrant important, uh, or can I just use a USB cable? Uh, I don't think it's a USB cable. It's like a weird cable. It looks like a LAN cable, Adrian, I believe. Yeah. How much is the cost for premium minutes? I have no clue. Somebody else was talking about that, so. Um, Tunus, we're talking about Beyond ETC. Beyond ETC came out with their pricing model and how much it's going to cost for all of the products. If you don't pay for minutes and you run out of transmission time or whatever, do you still get to use it? Um, yeah, you do. Like I said, there's, there's base, there's base AI... Um, there's base AI radio comms. Like, you, you'll always have ETC with the base ones. Um, but the premium minutes, like I said, you're buying different voices, female, male, different pilot voices, different ETC voices. So it's like a, a, a mix, a mixture of AI, and it's all being generated. But, um, yeah. No subscription, but actually a subscription. Yeah, I did. it's weird, man. It's real weird on that one, dude. Like I said, it's it's a little bit odd. It's a little bit odd to say the uh, to say the least. Uh, like I said, I think for me, you can roll the videos back six months ago. I said for me, it's really going to come down to their pricing model and how they price this and if they're going to be competitive with it. I feel at sixty dollars plus plus having to pay for premium minutes. That's not really a competitive pricing. I know that there's not really another product like this out there, but at the end of the day, how long until somebody comes along and makes something that's uh, better, runs better, is free, this, that, whatever, right? I don't know, man. I just, I just don't see it, chat. I just don't see it. Like I said, I don't want to ever see like anything not succeed. And I, th I, I think the concept of it is, is good. Um, it's definitely there, but um, yeah. You can use a USB-C. He's not talking about how to plug the yoke into his PC. He's asking, I have three ports on the quadrant, the TFRP, the USB, and a USB-C. Uh, yes, like, I, I don't understand, Adrian. What are, you, what are you asking? Are you asking, initially you asked me the TFRPs hook into the quadrant. Yes, it's like a LAN cable. I don't think it's a USB cable. It's like a weird connection from what I remember, the Thrustmaster pedals. Um, Montreal traffic, Air Canada 401 lining up runway 6 right, Montreal. Um, if you're looking to just plug it into the control, like if you're looking to just plug it into your PC, um, yeah, USB-C is perfectly fine. I just, I, I, I was, the question that you asked was how do you get the TFRP pedals in? DX12 not fixed in the beta, even worse, look at the roadmap improved in Microsoft 2024. Hmm. They don't price it at sixty dollars. How else are they going to earn money? Well, like I said, man, that's not. That, if you have to price it at sixty dollars for something like this, that's not on me, Tanush. That's not on the community to worry about, dude. I think that's where you're. I, I, it's not on me for this developer to make money, right? If they if they have to price it at this point, like I said, for me, it's not worth it. Please fix yourself. At that price, for me, it's it's not worth it, man. All right, we should have fixed it there. 
Let's go back into the runner. Okay, hopefully it stays that way and fixes itself. Um, yeah, like it, that's not... It, I, <laughs> if you have to charge $60 for a voice ETC service, you better go back and figure something out because I think that's way too much money, man. I don't, uh, I, I don't think you're going to find somebody that says, yeah, the pricing's fair. It's a lot of money, man. That's a lot of money for what you're getting. A lot of money for what you're getting. Montreal Traffic Air Canada 401 departing on runway 6 right, Montreal. All right, Joyce came is on. Enjoy the departure, my amigos. Swaddles up to 40%. Sounds are up. Let's go flying. Chrono's on. Let's go. Manflex 62 SRS runway auto thrust. Under. Slight nose down pressure. Take up power set. Airspeed's alive. We'll see, man. We'll see. I wish them all the best. Just, you know, at prices like that, again, I think you're pricing out a lot of potential customers, in my opinion. Took a left turn, flaps clean. At $60 plus, you have to pay for the premium minutes. I don't know too many people that are going to choose that over flying on Pilot Edge, Vatsim, IVAO, etc., right? I mean, I understand somebody, like, maybe not comfortable to, like, take it to the real world and fly on Vatsim and Pilot Edge. Sure. But, like, Who's going to pay $60 plus premium minutes for maybe a month or two of like AI ETC until they feel comfortable flying on the real network? I don't know, man. Just doesn't, uh, just doesn't, uh, yeah, I don't know. Reminds me of like those old cell phone packages you had in the, in the early 2000s. The pay as you go, ah, shit, I'm out of minutes. Let me go run to the store and get another 20 minute card. Who remembers those? The old days of like cell phones before like there was like tow cell towers and shit up. You used to have to go and prepay, go get your prepaid minutes at the at the corner store. That's what it feels like. It feels like we've we've done something like that, you know? Oh shit, I gotta send a 50 cent text message. Hold on, let me go get go, go get a phone card. Autopilot one is on, flight deck, beautiful. Sweet. Nice. What are the call cards for long distance calling on a landline? I remember those, man. The little scratch off. You pay five bucks, you get like 10 minutes or whatever. Yeah, little scratch off tickets. I remember those. I remember those. I'm glad to get out of uh, spotting today for the first time this year. Can give your thoughts on the gimbal, on my gimbal head after today if you're still thinking about getting out for videos. Okay, interesting. Thank you, David. Okay, if you want, honestly, log off for the arrival and go for the 15 approach because the two fours and zero sixes get boring. Keep it interesting. We'll see, man. I mean, I can always ask the controller. <clears throat> the controller, if it's not crazy busy and he can fit us in there, Vine, we could probably get it to do so. 
Hey, going to Flight Sim Weekend. Robert from PMDG will be there. Get a trip to Europe, Netherlands, secret project, maybe a 7473 Max. It's on the forums, PMDG Cabin Canada. Enjoy yourself. Uh, I don't know, man. Probably not. It's a little bit too last minute. We'll see, man. We'll see. Maybe Thrustmaster. I know that Thrustmaster is going, so I don't know. Maybe Thrustmaster will be like, hey, we're going to the Netherlands. Pack your bags. We'll see. Matsum is so lax. I see people doing the dumbest things. I had a guy yesterday screaming into the mic. Yep. Oh, yeah. There's all kinds of things. The banner is not working. Thank you, Kimberly. I have to refresh it. Sometimes it does that. Sometimes it does weird things. And I just have to refresh it and everything's fine. There we go. Now it's working. Thank you. What is FS Weekend? Uh, it's like Flight Sim Expo, but for Europe. It's in the Netherlands. It is in the Netherlands. Strody, what's up, man? Good to see you, dude. Sim Famous, thanks, man. Appreciate you. Welcome aboard. I hope you're doing well. Thanks for coming to hang out today, man. Chad, if you did enjoy that departure, don't forget to smash down that thumbs up button. I know we usually don't stream today, so I'm not expecting uh, a crazy amount of people in here or likes or subscriptions or donations or anything. We usually don't stream on Tuesdays, so thank you guys for joining me today. I do appreciate it. Again, apologize that I couldn't go live yesterday. So, As big as FS Expo? No, 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 much smaller. FS Expo is by far the biggest flight sim. Um, I think Cosford used to give it a run for its money when Cosford was an actual thing. You know the way, man, UK and... UK for flight simming, it's it's insane, dude. You, you look at like, you look at how small the UK is, but you look at how many like amazing flight sim streamers and like the, the support that they get behind their channels. It's crazy, man. Chewy, Flight Deck to Sim, uh, London Controller, all of these guys are from the UK, man, and all of their channels are massive. Uh, flight simming and simulation in general in the UK is it's crazy, man. The, the way that they support their content creators as well, is, it's pretty crazy, man. It's pretty crazy. AJ, 21 months. Appreciate you, man. Huge no floaties to you. Thank you very, very much for your support, dude. Incredibly kind. 21 months. Should not be getting a parade hearing. <laughs> a parole hearing, sorry. Uh, I thought I said, <laughs> they said parade. Oh, man. Thanks for support, dude. Appreciate you, man. I'm not online for a couple of days. I've been offline setting up my new PC. There you go. Nice, man. Heard that all the comms on VATSIM are now recorded and can be reviewed against connection logs. Hopefully, we'll start getting some bans of people acting stupid on frequency. Hopefully, man. Hopefully, dude. We'll see, man. Cap, if you stream, we will show up. Date and time will be a uh, damned. Thanks, Bomb Tech. Appreciate you, man. Huge no floaties to you, AJ. Thank you very much, man. 21 months. I feel like it's been way longer, man. But we're going to celebrate 21 months. Thank you, dude. Appreciate it. Do you play any other games or only Microsoft? No, I play all kinds of games, man. Do you know what I installed uh, the other day, which we might do a stream of? Helldivers. Played that last night. Daniel Barry and I played for a little bit. Um, Helldivers. I think that could be a really fun game on stream, too, to play with, like, maybe some 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 potential uh, subscriptions or members or something like that, subscribers. Sorry, I just came in. What's $60? Uh, the Beyond ETC, that ETC program that uses AI. It does, Andy. I love the co-op aspect of it. It's literally chaos. It's co-op chaos. There's just bugs and things around everywhere trying to kill you at all times. It's, uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Is it a one-time fee? Um, yeah, so you have to buy Beyond ATC for $60, and then you have to pay for premium minutes. Gigliotis. So you have to buy premium, well, you don't have to, but if you want like different AI ATC and like proper like call signs and stuff like that, I've heard, I don't know if that's true or not. Um, yeah. Can we show Rocket League? Oh man, Rocket League's. <sighs> Rocket League is one of those games. You love to hate it or you hate to love it. One of the two, man. I don't really have fun when playing Rocket League, so, so to speak. It's not a bad game, but I don't necessarily have fun playing Rocket League. The automatons are rough. We'll see. Yeah. Those minutes are not a subscription, though. Yeah. Yeah. Not a subscription. Sounds like Deep Rock Galactic. Have you ever played that? Uh, I don't know. Maybe back in the day. Is that an old game? Um, just been reading. Not a subscription, but you buy more time when you run out. 
yeah, like I said, dude, I, I, the only reason they're not calling it a subscription based is because the community was like all in uproars when they first mentioned that this is what they were going to be doing. The community was 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 real upset about it. Um, they were they were like, oh, well, we're not paying for subscription service ETC, and they were like, no, 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 it's not subscription service. Meaning, I mean, listen, if you want to like go technical about it, I guess technically you don't need to buy the add-on ETC. You don't need to buy the add-on minutes to get the program to work. You can still use the default AI ETC. I, I, something would tell me though it's probably not very good, but um, yeah, like I said, man, I, I, I don't know, dude. I don't know. I just, I just, I don't see this being as popular as it would be, let's say if it was like 20 or $30. And this kind of just circles back to, I always go about this. As a developer, in my mind, now I'm not a developer, I don't know much about business, but I do run my own business from home and all I can tell you is, from my understanding and what I've gathered over the years of being a flight sim streamer, enthusiast, whatever you want to call it, um, people are much more likely to support a project at a better price than they are at a higher price. So if I'm a developer and I'm sitting there and I'm looking, okay, well, I have a hundred thousand people that I can potentially sell this to. At $60, you've now cut that hundred thousand people probably down to like a couple thousand people, right? That are gonna be willing to spend 60 bucks USD on something. Then you take that even further down to the people that are actually gonna buy your subscription, who are actually gonna buy the premium ETC AI or whatever it may be. In my mind, wouldn't it just be in so much smarter to offer it at like $30, $40, $35, something that, you know, cost half the price of like an add-on aircraft, half the price of a simulator, something like that, right? And then you get just so many more people that are immediately interested that your sales, whatever you were going to sell it at $60 for to the people that would pay $60, you've now doubled, tripled, quadrupled your sales because you've priced it accordingly and people are like, you know what? Yeah, fuck it. For 30 bucks, I'll give it a shot. You know what I mean? I know that there's a lot of people out there that, that also think like I do with something like that. Like at 60 bucks, no way, man. I'm, I'm not interested. I'm sorry, dude. That's not, I'm not paying $60 to have AI ATC when I can log in on VATSIM, Pilot Edge, IVAO. Uh, there's, the networks are, there's so many other networks as well. You don't, POSCON, there's networks everywhere. You know what I mean? It, but at $30, I may consider it for the flights, you know, like today, we're flying Montreal to Toronto, no ATC till we get to Toronto. So would I have Beyond ATC on right now? Maybe for $30, I might think about it, but it's just, it's one of those puzzling things, man. I, I, I don't understand, actually, I don't know if it's not that I don't understand or if it's that the developers, pardon me, don't understand. The people who created the business model to say intentions must smoke more weed than you do, <laughs> higher than a giraffe's butt cheeks. <laughs> I mean, like I said, it's, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's, uh... Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm I'm not about it. I just, I, I think that it's way too much money. Way too much money. Especially, like I said, when you have, like, if VATSIM doesn't exist, Pilot Edge doesn't exist, IVAO doesn't exist, POSCON doesn't exist, sure, sure, absolutely. I, 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 I see this being a huge, I see this being a, a cool product. But the fact that we have all these live networks and you can literally go and speak with real people and fly with other real people instead of having like all this eight AI stuff going. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's too much. Uh, Canadian pilot, thank you very much for your first class subscription. I appreciate you, my friend. Huge no floaties to you. Thank you for joining me today for our Canadian ops, Montreal to Toronto. Thanks so much for your support, man. Welcome to the green team. Hope you enjoy your stay here. Custom emojis standing out in chat. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, isn't that a Beastie Boys song? No, ETC to Toronto. Could be, could be, yeah. Uh, however, when you have $15, four times the customer base, you probably have to close 10 times the potential customers though. Well, that's what I'm saying, Les. That's exactly it. Um, I, I, I completely understand how the business model works, right? Lower price means you have to sell it to more people to make your quotas or whatever. I, to me, it just, it, it just is, 
to me, it's a no-brainer. To me, and that's where I think some of these developers don't actually truly understand the 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 market that they're selling to. Um, yeah, I I don't know, man. I'm not here to debate things. If that's what they want to price it, nobody's going to stop them. But um, like I said, man, at sixty dollars, you're probably not going to see it at my. Um, you know, at $60, you're not going to see it on my channel. Even if they were to reach out and say, hey, Captain, we want to send you a free promotional copy, I'd probably respectfully decline just because I, I just, I think that that's way too much money for the product that they're offering. And I just don't see myself using it on a, on a weekly, monthly, daily basis. I just don't see it. Most flights that I do, if you look at it, most flights we have ATC. It's very, very I rare. I 100% agree with you, Captain. It's one thing just being $60, which is very pricey, but it's another that it's $60 and pay for other things. Yeah. No floaties to you, Captain. Thank you, man. Huge no floaties to you, Cal. Thanks for the $5 donation. Appreciate you, my man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 100% agree with you, though. $60 is ridiculous and clearly means it's not good. No, I wouldn't say that, man. I would say that it's actually probably a really good program, and that's why they're charging $60. I don't think it has anything to do with it not being a good program. I bet you it's a great program. Again, though, I, I, I don't understand how you can price it the way that it is when we have products like VATSIM, Pilot Edge, IVAO. There's, listen, like I said, man, if you want to get ETC, there's nothing better than having that person-to-person -person interaction. Being able to actually speak to another person who's doing an ETC, doing the controlling job, it's just, it, there's something about it that's just, that's just amazing, and it's fun, and it's wonderful. And I always tell people, you're going to get to a level. I'm not saying sometime, like every time it's your first week of flight sim, you got to go fly on pilot edge. No, not at all. Um, or VAT sim, but... Everybody's going to get to a point at their flight sim career where they need something extra. They need that extra step. They need that extra realism, sense of realism. I just don't know. I, I just don't think. I mean, people are going to buy it, of course. I'm not saying people aren't going to buy it, but I, I just, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. I just, I just don't know. Kagri, thank you very much for your support, my friend. Welcome back to business class. Huge no floaties to you. Thank you very, very much for the continued support of the channel. Appreciate you, man. And we've got Mr. Rob Reed dropping five gifted members. Guys, if you're lucky enough to get a gifted membership, please make sure you say thank you. That is incredibly kind. I really do appreciate you, man. Thank you, Rob. Five gifted members to the channel. Appreciate you, dude. A friend of mine was using it yesterday, and it's cool, but I wouldn't pay $60 for it. Yeah. I mean, like I said... If I really want ETC and I really want to get like proper ETC coverage, guess where I'm going? Vatsim, IVAO, Pilot Edge, you know? That's, uh, to me, it's a no-brainer. To me, it's now, again, I understand. Some people aren't ready for, for Vatsim, Pilot Edge, IVAO, and that's fine. But I don't think selling them a product for $60 is all, is, is going to be the alternative. Because I think at some point, you're going to own it for a month, two months, maybe three months, and you're going to want the real thing. You're going to have picked up the language, you're going to, you're going to have picked everything up, you're going to understand the lingo, you're going to, you're going to get it. And then you're going to want to take what you learned. Now, again, is that worth $60 for you learning how to speak to ETC properly? Maybe to some people it is, and, and, and maybe that's who they're targeting. In my opinion, the way that streams are nowadays, you have streams, you have real pilots streaming. I mean, you got Flight Tech to Sim, V1, E330 driver. I mean, there's so many real world pilots that are flying. You have streamers like myself, London Controller, uh, Chewy, uh, XP72, uh, Captain Will, all these other guys that fly on the network. If you really want to learn how to fly with ATC, you can literally just watch any stream, any content creator, you'll learn it. It's, it I feel like having to pay $60 to learn how to speak to ATC properly is just, it's kind of crazy. But uh, oh, I'm, I'm missing. I'm missing all kinds of of content creators. I'm just putting the ones that I, off the top of my head, that hang out here and stuff like that. You know, so I only say it's probably not good because the price is that high it means that uh, you won't get many sales. Just like X-Plane planes are priced so high because they don't get very many sales. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Don't forget Kenko. Sure, Kenko. Yes. I don't get to watch a lot of Kenko streams, so to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, I know of Kenko. Um, yeah. 
Having coverage everywhere all the time is a big part of the appeal. Still too pricey. I agree with you, Jay Foot. I, I agree, man. It's, uh, it's. Um, I love the concept of it, Jay Foot. I really love the concept of it. I'm just having a hard time biting on the sixty dollar price tag plus 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 right i get it some there you don't have to go plus 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 you can still get it for 60 dollars and use the product as intended but i just feel even at that price it's it, it's a lot man yeah we get an e310 stream soon mm, i don't know diamond not a lot of 310s still flying around we're currently in our real world ops we'll see man we'll see I'm a sub to him and he's such a nice dude and an amazing streamer. Who's who are we speaking? Kenko? Nice. Well I'll have to tune into a Kenko stream. I have him uh like I said, I, I I'm following him on Twitch. I just don't get to uh I don't get to go in there very often. I'm not on Twitch all that much anymore, to be honest with you, man. I went in there the other day, my subscription to London Controller somehow stopped. I had no clue. So I resubscribed to London Controller. I think Twitch does that, man. If you don't log in in like a couple months, like your some of your subscriptions stop. I don't know, it's weird. Kept you book your flight down to FS Expo yet? Where will you fly out of? Uh, I did not book my flight yet. I'll obviously be flying out of Ottawa, where I live. I'll probably go Ottawa, Toronto, Toronto, Las Vegas, or Ottawa, Montreal, Montreal, Las Vegas. We'll see. Uh, probably Ottawa, Toronto. That's probably the one that I'm, lo I'm looking to fly down on Porter with their new E2s, Embraer E2 195s. We'll see. If the $60 include the traffic injection, then I think it would be a good value to have traffic and ATC on the flight. Yeah, it doesn't do that. There's no traffic injection, there's nothing. You're just getting AI ATC. Yeah. That's where it's a little bit, you know, hmm. Oh, dude, Twitch is, Twitch is insane, man. Twitch is going, uh, I think it'll be sometime soon at some point soon in the future you're gonna see twitch go like 18 plus they're gonna have a section because all the streamers are leaving man everybody's going over to kick to twit to, to youtube to all these other platforms facebook instagram uh TikTok. everybody's leaving twitch man because one they take too much money their contracts are not good for uh, for partners, you know, a 50-50 split or a 60-40 split is not good enough. Got to be competitive. I even think YouTube 70-30 split is still too much, but, you know, knock on wood, YouTube hasn't YouTube hasn't changed their policies in like 10 years. So hopefully they don't. Um, but yeah, I, I honestly see Twitch moving over to that, so yeah. The controller gets so many gifted subs that I'm like six months sub to him after just watching a couple times. Pretty insane. Like I was saying earlier, Will, there's something about the UK, the UK sim world. It's like its own little genre in itself, Will. The UK guys support the UK streamers literally to the death. London Controller, Chewy, Flight Deck to Sim, all of these guys, man. It's like they're on a pedestal in the flight sim world. It's it's insane how 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 much the the UK audience sticks with them and supports them and donates and members and subscribers and it's wild, man. It it, it truly is something to behold. I, I noticed it years ago when I used to watch uh, Rest in Peace, Matt Davies a lot. Um, it was uh, pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, thoughts on the Salty 7.4? I don't think you need the Salty anymore, man. The default 747 is still the, the best, I think. The default 7.4 is, uh, is where it's at, man. They got the working title guys went and did LNAV, VNAV, and FMC and, and, and all kinds of stuff. So yeah, Matt died. Uh, Matt Davies Bellens. Yeah, man. He died like two years ago. I feel like it's been two years ago, a year and a half, two years now or something like that. It's been quite a while. Yeah. But yeah. Will, it's crazy, dude. It's crazy, man. I've always said that. That's why I always think in my opinion, the UK is the, uh, the UK and some of the some of the other European Eastern European countries, in my opinion, are the king, the kings and queens when it comes to uh, when it comes to, to flight sim, man. Yeah. The salty is obsolete. It is, eh? Okay. Did you hear about Air Serbia and the Embraer 195? I did not. No. Mahan Air or Iran Air is all that's left for those three tens. Yeah. Default 747 is done amazingly for freeware. Way better than uh, they did with the 787. I agree. 
I remember the 737 was so bad at first, but they did a lot of great work, and the hand flying is incredible. I agree with that as well. Yeah, I do agree. Thank you. Hey, Cap, have you heard about A Pilot's Life Chapter 2? Uh, I've heard of A Pilot's Life. I didn't know there was a Chapter 2. Nope. Let controller streams go wild? Yeah, I always call him DJ Jamie. DJ London Controller. Half of his streams are like him playing music. Hold on, let's let's pull. <laughs> God, I can't wait to meet him, man. I feel like he's just going to be an absolute mess when we're down in uh, Vegas together. Half of, half of Jamie's streams are like... Pumps up the music, starts bouncing around in his chair. Oh, here you go, amazing, you guys. You guys, amazing. <laughs> this crazy British accent. Hiccup, uh, how do you make the clouds look so good? Uh, they're just on ultra. Just on ultra. He is going to Vegas, Max. Yeah, he is going to Las Vegas, man. And we're still waiting to see if Chewie's going to be there. I would think Chewie's going to be there. Whether Chewie's there by himself or with Microsoft, I'm sure he'll be there. Maybe even with Thrustmaster. I don't know what's going to happen because he's he's been a Thrustmaster ambassador for, fuck, years now. He's been an ambassador for years. So I'd be, um, I would, uh, I'd be curious to see what's going to happen with Chewie and his, uh, and his Thrustmaster sponsorship. Just because he doesn't stream all that much anymore. British. British. In it. In it, in it, great song, in it. <laughs> typical Jamie stream, dude. Vegas is gonna be so lit this year. It's gonna be awesome, man. I am definitely excited. We should try and go out for a big fancy dinner, uh, Mr. Max. And by fancy, I mean let's just go to like a steakhouse somewhere, a, a, a nice steakhouse. I've been looking at like some of the old school, old school. Uh, steakhouses in Vegas. Um, looks good, man. Looks good. Any movement on the contract? Nothing yet, Will. Kind of surprised, man, to be honest with you. We're almost through, uh, we're almost through February. Yeah. They said it was coming, so I'm not too concerned, man. I mean, at this point, it's kind of just on them. They're missing out on a full month of February sponsored streams and stuff, right? I don't know, dude. They said it's coming. I'm sure we'll get through it. Vegas is going to be a blast. It's going to be there. Uh, very excited to see the expo. I got uh, the NAM show for the music industry, and I'm curious to see if... Uh, there you go, Sim Famous. So that'll be cool. I think it cut you off at the end, but... You got to be recommended any Logitech flight sim accessories like autopilot control flight panel. I only really recommend the Logitech radio stack, man. You don't really need any of the other stuff, the autopilot panels and that. Nah. Just go with the radio stack, man. That's the most handy. Yeah. Over or under for Phoenix to release before March? Oh, man. I don't know if I'm willing to take that bet. How many more days? 20, 28 days in February, right? 29. Um, so we've got nine more days. I don't think it's releasing. Nah. Nah. Mid, mid-March. Mid-March. I don't think we're getting it before then. You have to make the music volume go down when you speak to complete the DJ vibe. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Hey, guys. Hey, how are you today? Just having fun? Just hanging out? Go to four kegs in Vegas. Awesome Stromboli. Hmm. Triple seven before the expo. Uh, yes, yes, yes. I would say triple seven before the end of March, Mr. Max. Triple seven before the end of March. Wasn't this Phoenix update originally going to be in October? Yes, they are. Uh, yeah. SW Steakhouse at the Win. There's um, there's a pretty good steakhouse. It's called Voodoo Voodoo Steakhouse, and it's on the very top of the Rio. Looks kind of good. Looks interesting. I don't know if it's like one of the better steakhouses, but it's at the Rio where we're staying. It's called the Voodoo Steakhouse and Lounge, and it's like all the way at the very top of the uh, of uh, of the Rio where we'll, where we'll be staying. Jesus. Um, Oh no, you gotta crank that mic volume all the way up and add an echo. Gotta get your shout outs on. 
Oh, man. Acap, do you fly the CRJ900? Um, I do. Currently waiting for a big update for that to come out, though. What's the Golden Steer? Is it the Golden Steer Vegas? Golden Steer. Is, it, is that the one? Yeah, it is. The Golden Steer. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is where, uh, this is where, like, Sinatra used to go eat, Max. Look at this place, dude. This is where Sinatra used to go eat. Sinatra, and it, like, it's, it's, like, it's in, like, some, like, strip mall up in, up in north, uh, north of the strip. But, I mean, look at it, dude. Like, Sinatra, all the, all the big... Look at that piece of meat right there, Chad. Oh my goodness. What's this? Crab legs? Crab legs and like a filet? They do table side um, Caesar salad where they make the Caesar salad right out in front of you. There was the Caesar salad. Prime rib. Golden Steer Steakhouse. I think we should try and go here. 1958, they opened the doors. Apparently, it hasn't changed since. It's like the original, I mean, look at that, dude. Look at the inside of that place. That's that's as 70s, 60s, 70s as it gets. We gotta go there. You've been there, it's awesome? Okay, cool. We'll definitely check that out. My wife and I are, uh, my wife and I will be doing a Ramsey restaurant a day when we are there. Yeah, Mitchell, we're looking at doing that as well. I wanna go, I wanna go to Hell's Kitchen and get his like, uh, get uh, the, the some of the famous dishes that he does. Looks expensive? Oh yes, it will be. Besides Logitech's, what do you think of the Mini FCU's Airbus Autopilot panel? Save Stop your bad. money, don't buy AI ATC. Use the default ATC and a traffic injection service. Pro tip, you can also connect to VATSIM as an observer if you want to follow along with real people. True, true, not Citation Max's socks. Nice, thank you for the $5 donation, my friend. I appreciate you, definitely not Citation Max's socks by any means. Thank you for the support, my friend. I appreciate it, dude. Kev, if we get a butter, then Dan will have to treat you. Oh, yes. Dude's trying to uh, get us DoorDash midstream. I'm hungry. No, sorry. Apologize. I got my meal plan downstairs, too, right now. I really badly want to try the Beef Wellington. That's what I mean. That, that's exactly what I want. I want to try the Beef Wellington, Wellington in his uh, sticky toffee pudding, I think it is. Those are like his like the things that like he's super famous for. Yes, want both of those. All right, we are getting ready for top of descent here, friends. We are 32 miles from descent. So let's go ahead and plug in some information here, see what the weather is doing. Let's go to weather, we'll go to ATIS, we'll go to VATSIM. They're probably gonna tell us two, four left. Um, what are the winds? The winds are 160 at nine. Oh wait, runway one five left available on request. Departure runway two three runway one five. Okay, that's for departures. We'll see if he lets us. We'll see. We'll ask him. We'll see what he says. They should accommodate it. Fingers crossed. Um, to talk about the uh, Airbus panel here, um, Kegri, it, it, it's decent for what it is. It could be better. Um, the build quality is a little bit suspicious, in my opinion. Not even by suspicious. I just mean cheap. Uh, the build quality of the of the autopilot panel. Now, all the buttons, the screen, the dials, everything of that is perfectly fine. It's everything else. Uh, the, the the box, the 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 actual like unit itself, just feels very cheap. Feels like they they used probably the cheapest materials and the thinnest uh, metals to get this thing put together. Um, that being said, I haven't really run into any issues with it yet as far as like programs and it not working and stuff like that. But um, if there was things that I would change about it, it would definitely be the um, 757. It's always a nice barrel minimum. Um, I would change the uh, the little suction cups at the bottom to get it to stick to your desk or whatever you're using for. Terrible. Um, just a very silly design in my opinion. It, you shouldn't even have anything put down there. Um, and yeah, like I said, the actual like frame, the unit of itself is just such thin, thin sheet metal. Uh, just not really the best designed, very cheaply designed. Yeah. Cap, meet and greet with Gordon Ramsay. Yeah, right. Do you use the Mini FCU with the Phoenix? I am, I'm using it right now. The only thing is that it doesn't show you these numbers. So I have the Mini FCU right here, but it doesn't show 320. I can change it, right? Like I can move it. 
and it's fine, but I can't... It, the only thing that it really shows is if you're on, like, the um, the fly-by-wire and stuff like that. So that's the only unfortunate thing. 269, yeah, I'd be waiting, man. I know that there's another group of people that are developing one, and I think it's going to be, like, half the price, Kegri. So I would be waiting for that one to come out. Now, I was fortunate enough. Uh, I have some friends in the industry, and one of my friends actually ordered a unit, and then they reached out and sent him a, a product review unit. So he sent me over the product review unit. Uh, Mr. QA Pilot, we all know him. If you've been watching my streams or if you're in the flight sim industry community, you'll know of QA Pilot. People are looking to learn how to talk on VATS. I'm used to watch this guy on channel. His name is Aviation Pro. Partnered up with VATS and made a bunch of videos. Yes, he's from the Netherlands, isn't he, Hussein? I used to watch him as well back uh, a long time ago, man. Yeah, I think he's a real world pilot now as well, I think. For like Baltic or Nordic or something, I can't remember. I thought they had changed something so that it worked with the Phoenix. I think initially it didn't even work at all. I don't know about the displays. Somebody was saying we're waiting for Phoenix V2 to come out. Something about Phoenix has to send them data over or something like that. I don't know, man. I don't know. 777 V2 delayed yet again. Which one is this, Melinda? The, the X-Plane version or the Microsoft version? Cockpit Simulator has picks up now in the store for their... 320 FCU and EFIS. Interesting. Using 24 left for the approach in Toronto. I'm trying to get 15 left. We'll see what the controller wants us to do. We'll see if the controller allows it. He might allow us to land on 15. We'll see. Um, top of the sense in nine miles. We're looking good. Cap, on the Phoenix video, they kind of hinted that in the future they might be working with another aircraft. Most people are speculating a Boeing aircraft because he said seven before he was cut off. I don't know. Maybe. Block 2 is supposedly licensed to work with the external hardware and have remote MIC do. Well, there we go. So hopefully then it'll start working. I think that's what everybody was talking about. All right. Um, there's some restrictions here on the descent. We're going to plan for the 1.5s. We need to be at Vidro between 12 and 14. So I'm going to go down to 12. We should be on ETC by then. So go 12,000. We'll start our descent now. Good. We'll go upstairs. Seatbelt signs back on. Good. Flight Factor 1, PMDG isn't a V2. Ah, yes. Sorry, I should have put that together. Um, what was their what was their delay slighted for this? I mean, it's not surprising, right, Melinda, at this point? But, yeah. Do we do a block time today? Nope, I forgot, Sim Famous. I swear, man, I'm going to need somebody literally screaming at me as I'm pushing back the aircraft to do block time. That's the only way I have to drill this into my brain. I've flown for 10 years not doing block time or anything like that. Fuck, you guys remember, I, 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 I only started doing chrono like a couple years ago, and that's because chat would just yell at me. I'd pull onto the runway and people would be like, chrono! So we have to remember block time. Block time and replays, gotta remind me. <laughs> Karen, what's up, dude? Good to see you, mate. Used to watch him when I was 16, 17, I'm 25, now it's crazy how time flies. Yeah, I remember watching his videos way back. I actually, Hussein, I learned how to fly on VATSIM off of like... Uh, I never saw a video. There was no tutorials or anything. I actually, it was like a, a like forum post. Somebody made a forum post and he like worded at word for word what you should be setting. Like, wh sorry, what you should be saying uh, when you connect to the network and you're all set up and you contact the controller. It was like word for word. It was like blank, 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 with information blank, ready to copy IFR clearance to blank. And I just used that as, like, my template for ever, man. Ever, ever, ever. I had it open on my second monitor, and I would literally just, like, make sure I was reading, like, as it went through. There's a freeware software, Phoenix Quartz, which will extract the data from the Phoenix and turn it into LVARs. But that means you are breaking your ProSim license if you do. I'll leave that up to you, Les, not for me. Cap up to go for now. Have a nice flight. Kagri, take care, my friend. Thanks for tuning in today. Thank you for your membership. Appreciate it, man. You use that template as well? Dude, I can't remember where it was. It was on a forum somewhere. And yeah. No reason yet. One of the devs just said in general chat he thinks March, April. I feel like they were trying to compete with the, with PMDG, Melinda, is what I personally think. I think they were trying to get it out before PMDG gets their 777 out. And I think they probably realized that that's just not doable. 
Um, Flight Factor is a small team, small team of people. I don't know how many people are working under the Roman Roman guy, but um, I know it's a small group of people. Uh, if you don't mind, can you show in Task Manager how much CPU is Phoenix Bootstrap using? I I can tell you it's less than five percent. Critique for every time that I've that I've viewed it, it's less than five percent. Uh, it shouldn't be taking anything really. Phoenix displays right now are using 4 and 6%. 4% CPU, 6% GPU. Phoenix displays. Kep, what do you think of Phoenix YouTube video on Block 2? Personally kind of sick of the A320. I mean, same with everything. Yeah, absolutely fine. Yeah. Okay, it wasn't that one then, mofo, because I'm talking like... I'm talking like 15, 20 years ago, mofo. Like, I, like I, these things didn't exist. Like, the Microsoft forums didn't exist back then. This was on, like, I'm pretty sure I found the link on, like, an AvSim forum, which took me to some other crazy forum. I don't know what it was, but, yeah. Now they put V1 50% off because they need money, uh, but they say it's a clearance sale. Oh, yeah, yeah, no problem. No problem. Because you know what they're going to do, Melinda, is they want people to buy it at half price now because then they'll probably only offer like a very incremental price, probably like a 10%, 15% off if you bought V1. They'll do something weird, you know? I'm sick and tired of the hype. I understand the hype. Um, I get that the developers want to do hype. I, I just, I think that the developers are overdoing it when it comes to hype. Again, I've mentioned this before. You can take it how you want it. I'm sponsored by any builds, but I think they do it perfectly. You have a screenshot, and then usually from there, six months out, you'll start getting some teasers. You'll start seeing some content creators, some live streamers. They're going to start to stream it. And then usually within 48 to 72 hours, the community has the product. In my opinion, that's how you tease. That's how you, you showcase your products. That's how you get the community excited. You, you just hit them with it, man. Hey guys, keep your eye out for streams this week. Content creators and, and, and those guys have, have the aircraft. Watch out for, for content coming in the next couple of weeks. Boom, that's all you need to do. AJ, my man, 10 gifted members to the channel. Huge no floaties to you, dude. Thank you for the support, AJ. I appreciate you. That is incredibly kind. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Guys, if you are lucky enough to get a gifted membership to the channel, please make sure you say thank you. Incredibly kind, AJ. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate you, dude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Nope, no discount at all if you have V1. It's been set already since it's a brand new plane. They said no discount. <laughs> that's going to piss off a lot more people. <laughs> Melinda, that's going to be savage. Oh, boy. They are in for a rude awakening. And you know they're gonna that plane's gonna be about what did I say? I've always I think it's gonna be between $140 and $160. Yeah. Hype isn't really close. It's in beta 12 weeks later. We are making great progress. <laughs> Listen, dude, I agree, man. Like I said, I feel like a lot of these developers are just out to lunch. They don't understand the communities that they're selling to. It's yeah. What is transition altitude in Canada? Same as in the US of A, 18,000 feet. 18,000 feet is standard barrel pressure. Cap, do you still think we'll see the 777 Phoenix uh, Block 2 in March? I think by the end of March, we'll have both of those airplanes. Yes. I think we'll have Phoenix Block 2, hopefully maybe even the, the 319, 321, and uh, we'll have the 777 by the end of March. Yes. Fully believe that. And if we don't, hey, it wouldn't be the first time I was wrong, but man, hopefully not. Um, for what plane? Uh, the Flight Factor 777 V2. Is ETC talking to you? Uh, nope, not yet. Toronto Approach is going to be on 32.8. We're not really in his airspace. Probably coming up to, uh, probably coming up to Vidro. He'll probably give us a call. A little bit out of his airspace. Can I wait for the Innybuilds 350? I mean, I still think that's probably a year or two away, but yeah. Do you ever do fly-ins like group flies? We're going to do a fly-in on this weekend. We're going to do one. Mark it on your calendars, chat. Everybody, grab your most favorite GA airplane. 
We're going to do some GA flying this weekend. I don't know where the hell we're going to go. I, am, I, I might make a poll on the channel and I'll let you guys decide where we want to go. I have a couple ideas of where we want to go. Um, but I'm going to let you guys decide. Um, one of them was wanting to do some like GA stuff around like Palm Springs. Um, I don't know if we're going to do like business jets or if we're actually going to do like proper like prop like prop ops like Cessna ops. Um, I think I want to do like some Cessna ops and stuff like that. But yes, this weekend I've promised you guys for a while now. So this weekend on Saturday, Sunday, 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 we're going to do uh, some uh, community ops. Uh, what was the altimeter into Toronto? Which I was lower than it is 30. There's our ping from the controller. Uh, 30, 38. We'll bug this up here. 30, 38. Good. Uh, Toronto Approach contacting us. 32, 8. Good. We'll let them know that we've got ATIS information. Uh, whiskey. Persilis, thanks for your support, my friend. Appreciate you. Huge no floaties. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please do it on Sunday so I can join. I work on Saturday. Yeah, Sunday. It's going to be on. I don't know why I said Saturday. Uh, we ever do GA ops on Vatsim? Will, were you not around for the last time I did that? We all we all caught bans, Will. We all caught 24-hour suspensions. Well, not all of us. I did. <laughs> A couple others did as well. But yeah, last time we tried to do this on Vatsim, Will, there was like 80 airplanes that showed up. That was one epic stream, dude. If you guys missed that stream, at some point you'll have to go back and check that out because <laughs> that was absolute chaos, dude. That was chaos, dude. Yeah, we did it at St. Martin, man. We all loaded in at St. Martin. There was literally like 80 Cessnas just flying around St. Martin to St. Bart's to Saba back to St. Martin. There was people landing in St. Martin and they were like dot walloping all of us. <laughs> what stream? I don't, it, it was just a GA stream in a St. Martin. I don't even know, like, I don't even know if I'll be able to find it, but. Trying to approach good uh, afternoon here, Canada 401, 15000 descending. We've got the uh, Edis Whiskey on board. Pick up 401, Toronto arrivals, hello, squawk 1650. 1650, and we've got a small request when uh, when you're able. Yeah, go ahead. I'd like to shoot the 15 left today, if possible. I know you're saying you're landing 24 left and 23, but if possible, we'd like 15. Pick up 401, yep, sounds good. Runway 15 left, altimeter is 3036, and information with the descends 8000. All right, we'll expect. Uh, one five left. Thanks so much. We've got whiskey, and we'll descend uh, eight thousand Air Canada four one. All right, eight thousand feet. Sea chat. Just a little bit of a request. Nice, friendly, especially flying up here in Canada. You know you're going to get the nice, the nice, friendly controllers. See, nice, friendly request. Just, nine just nine. request Back the runway Delta. that you want, and there you go. Don't have to log Delta. off. Don't have to do anything Delta. else. Three, three, TNCM. Right. Oh yes, the rule. Uh, I will be there this Delta. Monday for a week. Uh, yes, exactly, Delta. Skywalker. You're lucky, man. Across, uh, you are lucky, dude. Nine, happy, thanks. No problem. Have a good day. Okay, four, five, two, surveillance service terminates. You can change on frequency now. Have a good Why day. 15 left? Because we never get the one fives into Toronto anymore. And the winds are basically blowing down the runway. One six zero at nine knots. We never get one five left into Toronto, so it's very rare. <laughs> oh, Paulswell, appreciate your condolences last Thursday for my grandfather's passing. Still rough. Other news. The only condition is I might have to delay you uh, for a little longer to accommodate one five left, but we'll see. Absolutely, no problem, man. You got to do what you got to do here, Ken. For one. Oh, Paulswell, appreciate your. Um, Flying Southwest 73 from BWI to Syracuse to see my family. There you go, Starcept. Very cool, man. Uh, grieving, it's all part of the grieving process, man. So do not worry. Don't apologize for it, man. I know what it's like, dude. It's not easy. Not easy, man. I was really close to my grandfather as well. So um, I, I get it, man. I get it. Crazy what uh, altitude and uh, attitude and humility will get you in life. Maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Gavin Gaming. Hello, my friend. Good to see you, dude. Nice controller. Much better than Mr. Should have studied your charts. Man. I still think, like, I still think to this day that was just like, uh, he knew that I was a streamer and he knew that he could, like, get one in on me. I really feel that that's what that was. That entire thing. Because, uh, yeah. Just no, no, 
no need for that type of behavior. You know what I mean? Like we're supposed to be, we're supposed to, we're supposed to be getting people to join the network and fly into certain airspaces yeah. and stuff like that. What a tool bag, dude. Direct Hoosier, and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I don't see Hoosier on my, on my FMC. Hmm, actually, Oscar, Oscar, Mike. If you had studied your departure charts, you would have known this. Oopsies. So sorry, Mr. Fucking Vatson Controller. <laughs> what a toolbox, man. Oh, shit. And I, I, I want us to pay attention, alright, that every single time... Every single time you get a vector, or you get a proceed direct to from a controller and it's it's direct to or um a, a, a vor or something like that you, they're 99.7 percent of the time the controller is 4,000 feet air canada 401 uh the controller is going to um is going to tell you what the abbreviation is like i said i think he knew that i was streaming and i think he was just trying to be funny like he was trying to get one on me you know what i mean like i'm pretty sure that that's what it was because otherwise there's no excuse for behavior like that like come on man you're not having a good day guess what don't don't go control on vatson you know what i mean like there's just just don't do it if, if, if that's the attitude that you're gonna have with with pilots flying on the network just don't don't log on to the network that day you know what i mean Kev, do you think frame gen will be available in your opinion for 2024 uh it should be yeah should be if, if, if it's available for 2020 are you saying the mod i'm sure somebody will make a mod vine yeah but like native support for frame gen it'll definitely be there now we just got a tool i don't know dude like i said man it was one of the first times it was one of the first times in vatsim i had been i had been uh I'd been treated like that. Like, I'd never been, like, yelled at for not knowing a fucking VOR, like, close to the airport. Never, ever, ever has a Vatsim controller been, you know, had that type of tone or had that type of attitude with me. Um, so that, that's why I said I, I don't know if he was having a bad day. I don't know if it was something happened to him, but, like, no need for that, man. Absolutely no need. Absolutely no need. You never get that beyond ATC, no humor attitude. Uh, yeah, no, probably not. Not at that price, man. Yeah. Just tried to expose you on stream. You handled this brilliantly. Maybe. I don't know, man. I don't know. Like I said, I always treat people the way that you want to be treated, man. You hear me, chat. Every si Even the people that I don't get along with or, like, the controllers that we may not, like, I always say, like, thank you for your time. Thank you for your service. Have a great day. Like, you're doing this so that, like, it makes my stream better and, like, I can have more fun by having live ATC and stuff like that. Like, yeah. Damn it, Les, I saw that they were all on sale. I may have to, I may have to order a box as well, man. I wonder if they even have any. I'm probably late to the sale. I only saw it like yesterday or the day before. Is frame gen safe for your PC? Yes, I've had I've had no problems. Yeah. Your response? I, I know, I was like, oh, I'm so, so sorry that I did not study the VOR off of my departure. I said something like that, I think. I was also a little bit snarky. But, um, auto brake low, armor ground spoilers. Speed's looking good right now. We're at 210 knots. I'm actually going to, well, I'm just going to leave it. Leave it right there. It's at clean speed. Awesome views on the way in. It is, man. This is also why I wanted to land on runway 15. I don't know if you saw. We had the city back there as well. Had a question. My frame gen seems to be flickering a lot every time I move the camera. Should I turn down some settings? Yes. That should help. Do you believe the frame gen mod is free or the sim, especially how good it is, blows my mind? It's crazy. I do agree. I do agree. LS switch can come on here. He's got us going down. I'm going to go... Uh, I'm gonna go open descent. Yeah, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go open descent. Just maybe he can vector us in a little bit quicker. Yeah, hopefully, he doesn't have to take us all the way to Meave Po. He's already said because of the other, we did throw in a special request, so it, it may be a little bit weirder for us to get in. But Hotel, India Hotel, Toronto. Hello, Squawk Four. Uh, hey, Cap. Any uh. On this Fox plane, every time I go to flare, it's either insanely non existent or I float half the runway. Um, cut the power at 30 feet. 
Start your flare at 30 feet. Not a crazy flare, but have a positive attitude at about 30 feet, and you'll you'll butter it in every time, man. One thing that I've noticed with this aircraft, it really depends. Um, what it really depends is sometimes it can be a little bit, a uh, little bit finicky. Like I said, if you don't have a nose up attitude at about 30 feet, I notice that it just smashes down on the ground. So yeah, you're a bit high on the downwind at Toronto. Uh, not really. There's just only 8,000 at Denpe. There's no other. Uh, there's no other restrictions. It's probably just. The airplane was descending us a little bit slower. Okay, you probably at Ongox. I think it's three thousand at Ongox. Yeah, three thousand at Ongox. So not really. We're coming up to four thousand now. He's probably going to get us down to three thousand in a left turn, sometime soon. Hotel India Hotel. You are identified. Kind of sounds up here a little bit. And uh, cleared in the Toronto control zone. The Toronto altimeter three zero. Are we always supposed to have positive uh, uh, attitude? Was the VOR on your departure? Was it uh, completely yeah, random? I believe it was on the departure, yeah, Isaac. Exactly. I'd have to look. Holy turbulence! Uh, I'd have to look. I believe it was on the departure. Uh, it was a it was a vectored departure, so there was there was no waypoints, Isaac. It was just like a runway heading. And then I believe there was a bunch of VORs that it would potentially send you to. Uh, would just like to park at the, uh, Again, when you look at your flight plan, though, it was just as like Oscar, Oscar, Mike in our flight plan, right? So that's why we, we, we didn't think anything of it, right? We just figured like he would say, Oscar, Oscar, Mike, you know? Is this real turb? It is, yes. That is real turb creating those bounces and bumps. Echo Bravo, Mark, what's up, my man? Good to see you, dude. Captain Hun, good to see you as well. Welcome. Isaac, good to see you, man. Welcome back. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Aircraft 401, turn left heading 220. Left turn 220, right, Canada 401. Right, 220 for us on the turn. Good. Aircraft 409, you should be descending on the glide. Uh, are you able to start descending? I find the Phoenix super sensitive on winds uh, versus other planes. No wonder they recommend the lower wind setting. Maybe, yeah. Like I said, Will, it, it, <laughs> I think it depends on the aircraft that you're flying, right? Because in my opinion, when you fly the when you fly the PMDG, real turb almost does like nothing on it. So it makes it a little bit. I don't know. I find that like every other plane besides the PMDG, I've noticed like real turb. I can say like it's there. The new Miami scenery is so much uh, better than the Latin VFR one. I would agree. Performance is still a little bit suspicious, but he's going to give us. He's going to give us a left turn here in a second and probably speed as well. Should get us down to three thousand intercept. We'll see what he does. He kept by the side tech throttle. Do you know if I can set speed brakes and flaps to lever on the fly by wire? Can be controlled by a button. I know that it can. I know that it can be controlled by a button, Ruben. I don't know if the axis can work. I'm not sure. You have to check that out. Yeah, I was up planning to fly along the 401. Is that too far north, or would you like me to continue along the 427? Holy bumpy, man. Okay, you know what, that's fine. Uh, I can keep doing what you're doing now. Okay, I'll continue to fly along the 401. We'll not uh, go north of 401 at this time. He's going to blow us through here hotel. in a second. I'll tell you, I'll tell you. He's going to blow us through the low. Okay, here we have 401. Sorry for a little bit of delay there. Turn left heading 120 to intercept. It's clear the ILS 15 left approach. Left turn 120, clear to ILS 15 left approach. Here, Canada 401, thanks. He blew us through the localizer. He's going to get us to turn all the way back through it now. One two zero on the heading. We shall do that. I'm going to arm localizer. I was going to do that turn automatically, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to mess him up. But Rob Salad might uh, tell us the next update. Did we not? We didn't get anything from PMDG this weekend, eh? Didn't get anything from PMDG this weekend. A little bit rare. Have you adjusted any settings within Real Turb? Did you keep them the way that you have them? I kept them all default, Ryan. The only thing I did was I turned down the sound. So I turned the sound from 1 to 0. Uh, Captain Hun, thanks so much, man. Huff. What is Huff? Hungarian? Huff. 
I'm not sure. Regardless, thank you for the support, my friend. I appreciate you, dude. Says, I always have stutters on touchdown. Do you know some hack to solve it? Since I have FS Realistic, it does it. I, I was having issues like that as well, and what I, I had to reinstall the simulator. Now, I'm not suggesting reinstalling the simulator, but that's the only thing that I found that fixed my, my issues. I don't know if, uh, if that'll help out, but um, that's how I solved my issues. Thank you, Captain Hunt. I appreciate you, man. The Air Serbia Ember 195 nearly crashed. Hmm. I didn't know about that. Clear your cache. That could be an option as well. Yeah. Clear your cache. All right, we've got Glide Slope. Uh, yeah, thank you. Cross runway 24 right. And uh, taxi delta. That's how you solve your stutters? Okay. Runway 33 right. Not suggest. Well, I'm, that's that's what I had to do, Will. I mean, I I beat myself over the head, head trying to figure out what the hell was going on with my sim. The only thing that I could do was a fresh reinstall. I'm I'm not saying jump to a fresh reinstall. That should be the first thing that you do, but I feel like inevitably, with all the world updates and all the updates that have been done to the sim, I feel like a fresh install is needed every now and then. Thank you very much, sir. And can I have? The EFB screen on some airplanes causes. Yeah, I've seen that as well. I always like to like keep things at like the home screen or something, you know. I gear down. Perhaps two. And we have been cleared to land. You guys didn't notice anything. The lights were totally all on. Aircraft 401, wind 170 at 7, clear to land runway uh, 15 left. Clear to land 15 left, Air Canada 401, thanks. Lap 3. Uh, parking today, uh, chat. To We're looking to go up here into so 144, right if available. So no, we are going to look to vacate either onto Bravo so 1 or Bravo 3. If we can roll it down to Bravo 3, three, three. that would be Clock excellent. Five, four. Uh, I feel like we'll be down. Maybe we'll just go idle reverse to Bravo 3. Let's do that. Idle reverse to Bravo 3. And we can make a nice little short taxi in. Flaps full. Ground spoilers armed. Auto brake is set. Cabin crew. Advise. Sounds are up. Coming up on 1500 feet. Yo, Kim's going on. Aircraft 405, welcome. Cross runway 24 right. My airplane. Enjoy the arrival, friends. A little bit of a quartering crosswind still right now. Feels weird landing on runway 15 left. It's been, uh... I feel like it's been years since I've landed this one. Runway. Five. Especially like on stream. Definitely a bumpy arrival okay, today as well. Uh, it's the wrong turn there. Uh, can you get back on Delta or you can take an extra round picture if that works better? It is well, I'm attacking back on the Delta. I'll cross the gate. Is on minimum. Medium. No more. Continue. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Retard. Five. 
Nose down gently. Reversers are out. Sixty knots, roll it out. Roll it, roll it, roll it. We're gonna keep rolling it. Keep rolling it. Keep rolling it. Keep rolling. I don't think anybody else is coming in on this runway, so we're gonna take this down as long. I know I completely forgot about idle reverse. Shh, don't wanna hear it. It's fine. We're safe. Air cap four zero one, welcome. Take the next left there on Bravo three again. Next left, Bravo three, no problem, Air Canada. Four. Air Canada 409, cross runway 33 right, and then back to Alpha, Alpha Lima today for a happy day. Thank you, thank you. We crossed the runway 33 right. Alpha, Alpha Lima. Rolling. And then we want to go in here at uh, Air Canada 405 as Alpha well, Kilo. cross runway 33 right, and then Alpha, Alpha Lima in state for a happy day. Right, Pops, right spoilers, uh, landing uh, lights, landing lights, yep, eventually I'll get there, no problem, landing lights, nose light, strobe lights, wing lights, CPU master start switches on, runway turn offs can come off as well. Alrighty. I'm saying Aircan 401, welcome, you can continue straight ahead on Alpha Lima if that works for you. Looking to go in at Alpha Kilo, we'll to do uh, Alpha Lima. Okay, Aircam 4 is your one. Yeah, Alpha Kilo is fine. You can turn left Alpha and then Alpha Kilo. Have a good day. Actually, no, you're 100% right. I was going in at Alpha Lima. Do you want us to continue on Alpha and then left on Alpha Lima? Okay, yep. Then, uh, yeah, sure. Aircam 4 is your one. Stuck in Alpha Lima. Have a good day. Alright, Alpha and then Alpha Lima. Thanks, man. Alright, Alpha to Alpha Lima. No wait, this is where I'm going in. Yeah, okay, straight ahead, Alpha Lima. I got lost for a second there, chat. Uh, EP Master Starts, what's coming on? Nose light off, we'll stop our clocks. What was that? One hour and six minutes. We're a minute late. And we're looking for stand 144, gate 144, safe dock, medium, no. And it's gonna be Air Canada. We're going this way, chat. Grumpy 867, Toronto, hello, you're cleared to Boston. Nice smooth departure. landing, it was a good one. Yeah, I'm happy with that one. <coughs> happy with that one. Not too floaty. Nice and buttery. A minute late, average day at Pearson. Probably more than a minute. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, sure, Grumpy, uh, 867, will be departing. Is that guy's call sign Grumpy? How can we fly that one? Yep. Can we fly Grumpy Airlines? Grumpy, that's badass. Last Grumpy, 867. Davis, thank you for that donation on short finals, well, my friend. Troll. <laughs> Trying to get me to crack. Bush is on medium. That's right, chat. You didn't know, now you know. Push us on medium. <clears throat> Remember, guys, if you did enjoy that arrival as well, don't forget to smash down that thumbs up button. We are doing the return flight. If you guys would like to join us, there is ATC here in Toronto. We are doing the return flight back to Montreal. Going to be a little bit shorter on the flight time because we do have that nice tailwind on the way back. Looking at just under an hour, about 55 minutes for the return flight. So we'll get deboarded and then we'll go and get ourselves reboarded. I don't know why we have a marshaller and also a, uh, a uh, screen in front of us. Why can I not think of what that is? Uh, AP bleed is on. Good. Engine number two is off. Engine number one is off. Red beacon light is off. Seatbelt signs are off. Are you going to dance for me? Is this even through GSX? I don't even think this is through GSX. Nah, that's just the native Microsoft flight. So he's even got an ID badge on. That's just the regular Microsoft guy. Because I was going to say, we have VDSG. I don't know why we've got that one. So um, let's go and request deboarding. 
Good. Sounds are coming back down. Beautiful. Let's jump outside. Give ourselves a nice little view. Why were you so far away? Gives ourselves a nice little view of our deboarding aircraft here. Beautiful, looking good. Scott, my man. Huge enough floaties to you, dude. Thank you for your support. Appreciate you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let Amy read that one out. Good, cool. Good first leg, friends. I'm happy with that one. Have to represent our Canadian flying. Always the best. Um, let's go ahead and head on over to you. Turn this down. Put some tunes on. Good. Let's go to Flight Radar and get our next uh, flight plan plugged in here. It's going to be Air Canada. I mean, we could do 402 or 404. Let's do 404. Air Canada 404. <clears throat> and we'll go CYYZ, CYUL. Good. We're going to be in the 320 again. The Phoenix. Good. Uh, 171 passengers on the return flight, chat. Three less than on our way down. Pre-file on the network, VATSIM. Uh, flight plan has been filed. Connected. Beautiful. All right, cool. Give me a second. I always love the displaced thresholds. It's like having the bumpers on the bowling gutters. Smiley face. <laughs> That's it. Huge shell floaties to you, man. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate you. Displaced thresholds, definitely. I actually find displaced thresholds throw me off a little bit sometimes, especially in New York. For whatever reason, landing, I think it's two to, two to right, two to left into New York. You have that insane, like it feels like a quarter of the runway is that displaced threshold. Can cause some issues for me sometimes. Because you just, you want to get the airplane lower than you do, so you end up getting like below slope sometimes. <clears throat> At least for me. Hotel India Hotel, would you like to continue flight following? I'm negative at this time. I'm actually going to go down to about 1,500 feet and follow the earth. Uh, Banner should be updated. Wonderful. <laughs> We're doing the deboarding the process. Not, so Everything looks good go there. Off, Happy but, with all of that. Um, thank you very much for the offer. Uh, do you want me to switch over to 122.0? Uh, yep, Hotel India. Hotel, three on service terminates. You can change en route. Uh, have a good flight. Thank you very much, sir. Have a nice day. Yep, see ya. Thanks again, Scott. I appreciate you, man, with the $5 dollar donation. Huge no floaties to you, Scott. Thank you, man. I get it 401 on 404 because of the highways in Toronto. Could be. Maybe. Yeah. How do I stop GSX from putting stairs at the back door? Uh, go to GSX. Go to Customize Airplane. And I believe you can, like, stop it from having something at the back, I think, is it not? Or it might be actually in the GSX settings. GSX settings? Might be in here somewhere. Uh, I don't know. You'll have to look around for it. I feel like it's in here somewhere. Disable rear staircase if jetway. Check. That's the one. I knew it was there somewhere. <clears throat> I knew it was there somewhere, my friend. Scott, my man, welcome back to business class. Or sorry, welcome to business class. Appreciate you, Scott. Huge no floaties to you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Incredibly kind, dude. Really do appreciate it, man. All right, let's go inside the aircraft. Let's get some things brought up here. Let's go to our Phoenix tab. I get better performance in Toronto than I do Montreal. How crazy is that? My flight, import next flight. 762, Toronto arrival, hello. Good, we've got 33 minutes on our turnaround. Should be plenty. Toronto, Montreal, let's go to Mass and Balance. 171 passengers, 2,600 kilos of cargo, and 5,200 
kilograms of fuel. We're going to load aircraft. We're going to go Clear instant because we're just using the zero fuel weight on this bad boy. Beautiful. Let's come down here. Let's go back to our NITREF tab. Let's do our NIT request. We'll plug in some information here. Air Canada 404 for the return flight. Bug that up into there. Toronto back to Montreal. Alternate of Ottawa. So that's good. Wonderful. <clears throat> we'll clear that out. We'll go to our flight plan page and we can actually get our uh, IFR clearance if we'd like to now. We've got ATIS information whiskey, so we'll go ATIS whiskey. Let me turn this down and we'll just get our clearance back. To our approach, good uh, afternoon again, Air Canada 404, high far back to Montreal, please. Flight Tampa, why was he getting an update? Arrival, you should. Again, yeah. clear to Montreal, dead key 5 departure, Miglo transition flight plan route, runway 23, squawk 1701. Air Canada 404 is cleared back to Montreal, dead key 5, Miglo then as filed, uh, expect departure out of runway 23 and squawking 1701, Air Canada 404. Air Canada 404, read back is correct, push back at your discretion, advise ready for taxi. Put you on ready to taxi, thanks Air Canada 404. Alright, we are on the dead key 5 departure, dead key 5. Good. We're going to have the Miglo transition. Good. We'll insert that. Wonderful. Let's go to Montreal. We'll go to arrivals. All right. Let's see what the weather is doing here in Montreal. Let me go to flights, unload, import, sim brief. Pick this guy. See what the weather is doing in Montreal again. Weather, real, metar. Winds are variable at two. Um... Is 2-4 right open now, or is it still closed? I guess we can go to... Information, no tams. Is it still closed? One and two, four. I know that the, 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 they, they removed this runway. It's no longer a runway anymore. This used to be a runway here. I've actually landed on this runway before. It's not a runway anymore. They have removed it. I know that that's a thing. They're in the process of, like, repaving it to remove the runway. So I think it's open. It is closed right now. 2-4 right is closed. Okay, it's still closed. Damn, dude. How long is it closed for? That's wild. Like, it's been closed for a long time, man. And we'll plan 2-4 left. I wanted to come in on the right side, but we'll plan 2-4 left. Not a problem. Um... Let's go 2-4 left. We're going to be on the Habs arrival. What does it have us on? Yeah, the Habs 7. Habs 7 arrival with the Miglo transition. Our approach via is no via. And we'll insert that. There we go. Beautiful. Cool. Go back to our NITREF tab. Uh, initial cost index, once again, 5. We're going up to cruise level of 330. Beautiful. Let's go to our next page. We'll fill in some information here. Zero fuel weight, CG 60.4313. 60.4-31.3. Good. And block fuel, we're going to call that 5.1 by the time we get out of here. Going to burn probably 100 kilos sitting on the ground. Uh, 5.1, beautiful. That should all be plugged in. Performance data now. Come up over here to our departure performance. Uh, we are departing on runway 23. Surfing conditions are dry. Flaps 1. We'll sync up load sheets. We'll sync up live weather. And we'll go ahead and calculate our V-speeds. 47, 47, 49. 47, 47, 49. Good. And then our flaps and uh, flex. Okay, let me make that. All right, um, flaps are one slash down 0 0.3 and flex temp of 67. One slash down 0 0.3 and 67 on the flex temp. And there we have it, beautiful. Cool, upstairs, everything looks good. I think they're almost done with the deboarding, so we're gonna go ahead and restart the Kutal script. I like to do that, we'll hang out here for a sec. I'll turn the sounds down there, Give that a minute.
All right, go to GSX, restart the Kutal script. Or sorry, fuck, I didn't mean to do that. I didn't have to do that again. My apologize. All right, GSX, we will sim brief okay. Right, we'll request boarding. Good. Cool. Sweet. Get the boarding going. How did an aircraft break a runway? Wing strike, tail strike? I don't know. He kept turning my closet into a Microsoft setup. Nice. Very cool. Should request 1-5 left for departure because you have the city off your left wing and it'll be beautiful. Um... I think we'll get that no matter what, Vine, because we've got, uh, departing out of 2-3, it's going to be a left turn all the way around, so we should, regardless, we should get a beautiful view of downtown. Um, maybe not as nice if we were departing off 1-5 left, because it would be right there off our left, but we should still get a beautiful view off of 2-3, uh, because it's left traffic. Ken, how are you, man? Good to see you, dude. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Um, Tuesday is perfect for tacos and tequila. Ooh, Taco Tuesday. I like it. I don't know what I'm going to have. I have my meal plan. It was delivered. It's actually at the door now. Got a nice desk off Amazon. It lights up with RGB. Nice. RGB means immediately... Uh, better performance, right? Isn't that what it is? A lot of people like the PMGG Boeings. I see you don't use them very often. Is that because your Airbus controller setup? Nah, man, I have a full, I have a full Boeing setup as well, dude. I have a Boeing FMC. I use the 737s a ton, man. Um, maybe as of recently, I haven't used them as much because I did spend a week doing world flight in November. Uh, we, we flew the 737 for like three weeks straight. Uh, we just spent a week flying the 737 as well. So no, do we spend, I, I like to usually do an, an even balance of like 737, E300, E320, usually some other little things sprinkled in here as well. So yeah. First time flying in the USA on Vatsim Cap. Any great scenery airports like Innsbruck in Europe? Uh, I mean, there are. Depends where you want to go. Um, look for like the Rockies, Aspen, Colorado. Incredible. Uh, Telluride, incredible as well. Um, there are some hidden gem air. Even like Colorado Springs is cool. It's not in the mountains per se, but you're close. Albuquerque is really cool. It has some really cool approaches. As far as like Innsbruck itself... The closest one would probably be Telluride or, or at, oh, 747 departing behind us, uh, or Telluride. If chat knows anything else, maybe Glacier Park as well. Glacier Park would be another good one. Pardon me, Jackson Hole is a good one. Um, yeah. We go back to explain for some 7.5 and Q400 ops. So Jacobo, um, I lost my ortho uh, drive, my hard drive that stores all of my ortho got corrupt and is no longer in my computer um yeah i uh i don't know when the next time i'll be uh i'll be back in x-plane man if i'm being honest with you x-plane without ortho i mean i already didn't have interest so x-plane without ortho is even less interest now if i'm being honest with you Kelowna is great as well. Yeah, Kelowna. There's some great scenery up in Canada as well. Up in Alaska, Juneau, Ketchikan, Sitka. I mean, those are all beautiful places to go as well, man. All three of those airports. By the way, my name is Ethan. I just changed my username to Banana Gaming. I'll try and remember Ethan, but I'm probably just going to go forward with calling you Banana. If you're okay with that. Hey, Gap, do you think Microsoft will use the Unreal Engine 5.1 or for 2024 release? I don't know, David. Good question. I don't think so. I think Microsoft will probably just make their own gaming engine. I could be wrong, though. I don't know. 
Vancouver to Kelowna is an awesome short flight. Both airports are beautiful and the controller, uh, and when there's controllers on, it's a lot of fun. I would agree. Yeah, we've done that, uh, we've done that, uh, that flight numerous times here on the channel. Uh, Alpha One, that's where we parked earlier, Infinite Flight, yeah. That's where we departed from when we left Montreal. We'll try and get it. If it's open, it's available. Yeah, we'll park Alpha One. Microsoft uses a custom engine already. There you go. I wonder if it's the same engine that, like, Forza and stuff runs on. Does anybody know if that is possible? <coughs> Excuse me. You are from the U.S. Nice. What was the iCow discussion happening on Sunday, dude? I tripped out and left. Uh, the iCow discussion? What do you mean? What were we talking about on Sunday? Fly Simulations, welcome aboard. I hope you're doing well. I don't mind Banana Gaming, JR. Uh, putting the city names in the title. Oh, yeah. Fuck, dude. Yeah. Some YouTube title. Uh, yeah, people were people were saying that they can't they can't find my old flights because I'm not putting the city in my title. And if I put the city in my title, it would be a lot easier for them to go back and find certain flights that I flew to certain airports, which I guess I understand. I get it. Um, but like I said, man, sometimes YouTube, like I can't, sometimes YouTube titles, like you're only allowed a certain amount of characters, right? In a YouTube title, sometimes it's just not doable. Sometimes it's not possible. You ever flying to Halifax? We do. Yeah, man. We flew to Halifax. Uh, I don't know when the last time is actually. But yes. I enjoy Halifax. We've got beautiful scenery for Halifax. Well, FSIM Studios, beautiful Halifax scenery. We should do a flight into, uh, into Halifax soon. I'm gonna put some shit on chat and it wouldn't mean we get banned. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. You were a weekend warrior, we'll call it. Weekend warrior. You should fly to North uh, Canada, like the mountains. Um, we, we do do that. Maybe we could do some Vancouver, Calgary. We'll see this week, man. We'll see what we're gonna do this week. Air Canada's A320s in their fleet. They do. Yes, they have lots of them. They're all old now, but they do. Come over. I'm controlling right now in Halifax. Ooh. We're going back to Montreal. We're getting boarded up. We're almost done boarding here. Back to Montreal. You'll be on a majority of the week? Okay, cool. We'll see if we can fit some Halifax in this week, this weekend. We need to do another flight back up to Iqaluit. That was fun when we did uh, Canadian North from Ottawa to Iqaluit, the real world flight. Jose, what's up, man? Good to see you, dude. Just got back home from flight school. Very cool, man. Is that Halifax down there? <laughs> oh, man. We never know. We could end up in Halifax. Uh, wink, wink, DTW. Uh, tell me if I'm wrong. Dude, that was funny, man. That was so good. Is that Detroit? Why are we over Detroit? <laughs> My reaction was priceless. I literally had no clue what was going on. I was like, holy macaroni. Fort Wayne, Indiana. What if we have any scenery? I think we do. Maybe? I don't know. I would join a uh, Toronto to... Uh, sorry. Um, Calgary to Vancouver flight this weekend. That'd be a good one. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see, man, because we've got our we've got our community flying on um, on Sunday. And I'm either thinking we're going to go flying down in SoCal, like go from like Palm Springs to like, I don't know, Santa Monica or something like that. I don't even know. <clears throat> I thought it would be kind of cool to like go over LA multiplayer Microsoft Flight Simulator, just like 
50 of us cruising along. Thought that could be fun. Or I want to go do like some Alaska. Go flying up in Alaska. But we've done Alaska before for community flying. We've never really done the SoCal stuff. We've never done the, um, the SoCal. Alternatively, we could go check out like, um, could go back down to like Bermuda and stuff like that. Could do some stuff down there. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. The thing with doing the Caribbean stuff, Davis, is just there's not like, I mean, I guess technically we could go from like Nassau over to like Miami or Fort Lauderdale or something, right? Or one of the executive airports around there, Opalaka or something like that, right? Um, we'll see. We'll see. Do you like the update on the 5 hour A3? I, I, Thomas, I don't know, man. I'm kind of kind of over the screenshots and stuff like that, man. I don't really care about those, to be honest with you, Thomas. I mean, it's good to know that, like, really, I look at the screenshot and I say, okay, at least they're, you know, at least they're doing, at least they're, they're, they're still working on it, right? But, yeah, other than that, man, I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm kind of over the screenshots and the teasers. I just, we've had so many of them over the years now, I just don't care. Just give me the products, you know what I mean? Give me the products. Your Phoenix is bugged out. My firmware and driver updated. My Airbus Thrustmaster throttle still won't move, even recalibrated. Huh. That's weird, JR. Shouldn't have anything to do with that, though, man. Like, hmm. I don't know. I don't know why it's not working. Saving up for the TCA Boeing pack. I have a cheap flight stick by Logitech still confused between Airbus and Boeing pack. I mean, yeah, you get whatever. I mean, if you've, if you've got a joystick already, I would go with the with the Boeing pack. And then keep your little joystick for when you want to fly Airbus and stuff like that, right? Nothing wrong with the Logitech joystick for, for you know, having around for when you want to fly Airbus. But yeah, the Boeing yoke is incredible, man. Would you agree that the screenshots prove that Microsoft did not buy the 380 for Microsoft 2024? Uh, yeah, I would think so, Will. I think that's a good assumption. Yeah, they, it would probably be locked down. I, I mean, unless, unless they've been given permission by Microsoft to continue to like... But if you look at any of the other like development groups that have been snapped up by Microsoft, like Working Title, uh, any builds, they don't really release like previews of something, right? Because it's all how, but who knows, man, maybe Microsoft could have said, yeah, go ahead, but I don't know. I would think with your assumption, it's probably correct that they did not, which also probably means now that any builds is probably doing a 380 for Microsoft. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's going to be kind of crazy to think we're going to have two 380s. See? This is on behalf of the whole Captain Crew. Oh, you're just going to your Kigachu. Say what? Uh, say that with Flight Factor and the Triple Seven, they drop hints in October and then nothing. Apparently, it's delayed till March, April. Uh, Fly Davers now. Somebody was saying. Fly Boar can uh, I can give them some slack because they're literally students slash devs doing this as a side biz. Yeah, for sure. Should do a flight into the North Yankton. Where's that? I've had the Logitech Extreme 3D Pro for about seven years, dude. I have one. It, I can see it right now. It's sitting on my my spare part uh, shelf. It's right there, man. It's always there. Never give that away. It's always ready to go. All right, chat. 30 more passengers left to board. Let's jump inside the aircraft. We're going to start getting some things ready here. Um, Q&H set good uh, initial altitude. Did he give me an initial altitude? I think he did. It was 5,000. Uh, I don't know. Let's actually check here. We're going to be on the dead key out of the two threes. Uh, 245 on the heading initial climb. Uh, I think it's 5,000. Yes. <clears throat> 5,000 is plugged in. We've got some company messages to deal with. Quick do menu. Atsu. Hey, OC. Received messages. Arrival message. Good. Preliminary load sheet, except, and our finalized load sheet, 171 passengers plus two. Good. Sweet. All reliable, of course. Yeah. Well, check extreme is my tiller. See, that's, that's great as well. Yeah. Be great to, to use for a little tiller or something like that. How about instead of two 8380s, we get a 350, a 340, and a good 7.4. I'd love to have an awesome 777. 777's coming. PMDG within the next probably month, I think we would get one. I, I think it'll be out. I've said before the end of February. I don't know if we get it before the end of February, but um, February's only eight days left in February, so we'll see if nine days left in February. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think we'll probably probably get it by the end of March, same as the uh, 
Same as the Phoenix 319, 321, IE engines, all that. Hopefully we get that as well. We'll see. We shall see, my friends. All right, we're almost done here, chat. Reboarding. The less can come off. Looks good there. Good there. Good. We have a kip quick cabin tour. I don't have the cabin turned on in this aircraft. I turn it off to save performance. I don't even know if you save performance, but I don't have the cabin turned on. A319 and 320 with a block two, or are they on a different launch cycle? I don't know if they're all going to come together, Kessadon. I would like to believe that as like a thank you to the community, they're going to they're going to give us everything all at once, but I honestly have no clue, man. I really 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 don't know. Um all right, one last person left to board. There we go. There's the boarding complete. We're going to go to GSX. Prepare for pushback and departure. No. And our squat code was 1701. Clear that out. 1701. Make sure we're on and reporting, which we are. Clear on this side. Ooh, Egypt Air 787 chat. Pushing back. Hello, oh my. I like that livery. Sexy livery. Hello. First Officer Daisy is saying hello, chat. I haven't flown the Phoenix since Christmas, got bored with it, waiting for the 321. Ah, understandable, man. Understandable, dude, I get it. Departure checks completed. Bypass pin inserted. How do you turn it off the cabin? Through here. Go to the Phoenix settings. Go to Sim settings. Go to cabin. And cabin visibility, turn it off. And cabin lights, if like you're outside at night, you'll see the cabin lights. Alright, they should be connecting, which they are, beautiful, we can come down here, we can go to ground services, I don't, the GPU wasn't even connected, I don't know why it was out, so that's fine, we'll remove that, there we go, it goes connecting to the aircraft, but to save so much, I, I don't know how much you save, to be honest with you, but I think you save like a decent amount of it. Might gain a couple frames here and there. You'll never realize how important frames are until you, you play um, Microsoft. Facing east on Bravo. That's the one. Park brake is released. Red beacon light is on. Seatbelt signs are on. Let's go. Turn up those sounds for an engine start. Engine mode selected for the start position. Good. Almost blew up engine number two. Enjoy. But using the EFB externally on my iPad, Game Changer, so much more responsive and quicker. Hmm, nice. I may have to check that out, because I still do have my iPad. I just need to get a new mount for it, so I can mount it right here. But yeah, that would actually be kind of cool. I may look into that. Was it a pain in the ass to set up, YouTube noob? That Egypt Air is going off to uh, Cairo. Hoof. That's a long one. It's very easy. Okay, cool. Let me look at setting that up then. Like I said, I got to get a new iPad holder. My iPad holder kind of broke. Maybe I can fix it and put some like super glue or something on it. Helldivers 2 After Dark stream. Yeah, maybe Dan. Maybe this Thursday. We'll see. Nope, just go to your IP4 address and plug into your web browser with 8083 uh, at the end and boom. Hmm, interesting. I may have to take a look at that. All right, let's pull up engine number one. Should get that. Egypt Air. PTU barking away. Egypt Air taxing out beside us. Jazz 953, runway 2. Altimeter 303. Reset parking brakes. Park brakes set. Uh, 
Man, that's a slick looking airplane, chat. That is a nice looking airplane. What is that barking thing called? It's called the PTU, Power Transfer Unit. That's a big boy. Is that a 900? It's got to be a 900, right? Maybe an 800? Definitely a 9. Love on the horizon. We gotta fly it again. I haven't flown the horizon in a very long time. And I know they've done a lot of work to it, so we may end up taking up the horizon sooner or later. That's a 900? Got gotcha. you. Okay. Does Egypt Air fly to Toronto IRL? I think so. I think a lot of people fly to Toronto will. Like, it's out of all the international airports, it's it's one of the main one of the main hubs for a lot of international flights. Maps one. Upstairs, APU is off, APU bleed is off, good. Uh, ground spoilers armed, engine mode selector back to the normal position, auto brakes max RTO. Uh, trim value down 0 0.3, flight controls down 0 0.3, good. Um, we're looking good, we're ready to go. Car approach, Air Canada 404, ready to taxi uh, 23. Okay, 404, runway 23, altimeter 3036, taxi Alpha Lima, Alpha Hotel. Runway 23, Alpha Lima, Alpha Hotel 3036, Air Canada 404. 3036, park break. Let's go flying, chat. Actually, let's go with the taxi first. Taxi light on. strobes aren't in auto. You know what we forgot to do because chat wasn't yelling at me? Block time. It's okay. We'll do it now and add a couple minutes onto that. Uh, yeah, I don't put my strobes on auto. Strobes just go on when I pull onto the runway. I don't keep them in auto. And we're following our Egypt Air friend over there. Traffic parker sound like 760 taxi. Wasn't blocked to for Phoenix. Supposed to be released a few days ago. What happened? Oh, no. It was supposed to release like four Zero months ago. <laughs> what? A couple days? Nah, man. Like four months ago it was supposed to release. Toronto is a pretty, pretty big hub, so I guess many international flights. Yes. Uh, Air India flies in. Like, I see KLM. I've seen Egypt Air. I've seen a bunch. Yeah. Love the sound of the views from the windows above the wing. Ah, man, you can hear the engines with the hydraulics and stuff. It's, it is beautiful. I like it. I like it. Oh, wait, you were Sim Famous? God damn it. How did I miss that then? So you're saying, what you're saying is it's my fault. Which then I'm saying it's Dan's fault. To which we all agree, right? Correct, good. Takeoff config test is normal. Saw an Emirates 380 last time I was in Toronto. Yeah, I've seen a ton of Emirates 777s here as well. I've seen a lot of Emirates 777s. Approach, Delta to which we definitely don't agree. Are you sure, Dan? I'm pretty sure we all agree that it was Dan's fault. I thought that was just like a unanimous decision that we knew it was Dan's fault. So here's the bug in Toronto currently, which uh, we should be getting an update. If you notice here, it looks like uh, we're about to fall into the abyss. I wouldn't try and taxi over that if I were you, but yes, this is the bug that's happening right now. With the That is a big one. Don't fall into that, please. That's a big hole in the scenery. Um, that along one of the other uh, many fixes hopefully coming to the Fly Tampa scenery. No, that's not DX12, dude. That's just the Fly Tampa scenery after the uh, after the Canada update. Kind of messed everything up. Not gonna lie, it looks like a great airport. Ah, it is beautiful. Yeah, Fly Tampa, Toronto. It's, it's a beautiful airport. 
just there there's some things that need to get done the thing with fly tampa is they're very slow on like updating and stuff like that yeah very 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 slow is that a sunwing out there chat it's a sunwing out there oh baby sunwing in the in the two e Left right on Alpha, then taxi Alpha Tango, Alpha Hotel. There's a Delta? Alpha Hotel, Delta Delta Airbus. Delta 380. FPS sucks. I mean, with frame gen, mid 50s. I can live with mid 50s, but. Removing Fly Tampa Vegas doubled my sim startup time. That's. I don't, I don't know, dude. I mean, I literally have like a thousand series installed so ready for democracy apparently hopefully the servers work tonight dan and i were able to do a little bit of a test run last night i had fun kind of did like a 15 20 minute thing it's a two delivery because the model matching is wrong for sunwing planes well no it's because a lot of the sunwing planes were leased from the same leaser that has the tui so instead of repainting the entire plane they just put the sunwing Listen, man, I've flown Sunwing a bunch. Very rare that you actually get, like, the fully painted Sunwing. He got in the Tui Sunwing, checking out the Caribbean update today. Hey, nice, Christian. Very cool, man. Enjoy your flight, dude. We're taxing behind this Egypt Air that doesn't want to seem to go faster than 10 knots. You ever done Sun Country Ops? We have, yes. We actually did some not that long ago. And we're going to do more. 81, hold short of hotel. Hold short of hotel, of the 38, 81. Sunning 762, are giving way to two aircraft. Uh, Egypt Air 77 and Air Canada 320. Look at the traffic out here today. This is wonderful. We got an Egypt Air 787 in front of us. We got a Sunwing 73 off to our left. And we got a Delta 320 or something minus 319 or 320. Wonderful. <coughs> Helldivers is definitely a game where you want to avoid standing in front of teammates. Yeah, I was kind of surprised that there's uh, there's um, team damage. I'm, I'm waiting for the way anytime I play any game with Rob that involves team damage I'm dead immediately the amount of times that he killed me while playing Tarkov is appalling he'd walk around a corner I'd be like Bob that's me okay when you walk around this corner I'm gonna be right there Rob walks around the corner bang bang double shotgun to the face it's like Bob I literally just told you I was right here why am I dying? How did I just die? <laughs> it's, it's, I'm ready for it. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Alpha's a ba uh, bouncy taxiway. Um, I got hydraulics. Ah, we're good. He's going full length. We don't need to go full. We're just going to hold short right here. <laughs> I was scared, okay? I mean, Tarkov is like a terrorizing game, but I'm hold short right here. That's Quebec. We're not going up to Quebec. Home Cockpit is developing a triple seven throttle attachment for the Thrustmaster. Interesting. Listening while I uh, listening while working saved me some biscoffs and poutine. Matthew, how are you, my man? Sounds good, dude. Especially on today's flight. Definitely getting some biscoffs. Egypt Air. Let's watch his departure chat. Hopefully it's nice. Nice and smooth. Enjoy, my friend. Safe flight to Cairo. It's going to Cairo, dude. How many hours is that, chat? Air Canada 404, line up and wait, runway 23. Line up and wait 23, Air Canada 404. Tarkov is bad for anxiety, especially when you're stoned, too. It's like the worst of the worst. Like, what was that? What was that noise? What was that? All right, roll it up. I wanted to see his rotation. There he goes. The rotation. Nice. Good. Did you see the latest news from VATSIM? VATUSA is moving away from 122.8 uh, and trying out 
dedicated CTAF frequencies, <clears throat> so not all Unicoms will be the same. I did not see that. That's pretty cool. I like the idea of that, Will. A little bit more realism. Kind of going like what Pilot Edge does, right? By using real frequencies, which I always enjoy. Going to have to look at your charts more often now and stuff like that. I like it. I like it. I don't think people are going to do it, but I like it. There was no noise. It's always just the drugs. <laughs> Bush on medium. Okay, four zero four winds one seven zero seven. Clear for takeoff runway two three. Clear for takeoff two three. Air Canada four four. All right, friends. Tristy cams on. Sounds are up. Let's go flying. Throttles to forty percent. He's in the walls. Chrono's on. Let's go. Manflex 67 SRS runway auto thrust. Blip. Slight nose down pressure on our side stick. Kickoff power set. Oh my, lots of rudder input already. Airspeed's alive. Turn offs off, nose lights, lights off, wing lights off. Beautiful. Yeah, I want to only Phoenix 320, but I just have too much time flying the longitude. Maybe. 320 is a great airplane, dude. It's a lot of fun to fly these. <clears throat> Trolls are getting a lot of snow, and when it does, it melts pretty quickly. Yeah. Do Phoenix A320 make discounts? No, they don't cost us. It's never been on sale, from what I understand. Claps clean. Okay, 404, identify through 3500. Turn left, direct to dead key on course, climb level 230. Left, direct, dead key on course, will climb 230 or Canada 404. Alright, let's go down to our FMC, direct, dead key, insert, let's go, left turn. 230 is set and plugged. Beautiful. Man, bumpy, dude. It's bumpy as it was on the arrival in. Yes, the Phoenix is 100% worth the price. Absolutely. Yeah. Hope he's getting everybody out of here. It's beautiful. He ain't making us wait. Boom, boom. Can you find a Northern uh, Europe here, someday? Uh, six, four, um, five, like, three, what do you mean, three, Northern three, three, Europe? Alpha, if you miss it, over the Christmas holidays, we flew, like, up in Rovaniemi, flew to Helsinki, uh, Stockholm. I'd like to go do some more uh, Norway ops soon. What turbulence difficulty are you using with the Phoenix? I have it set to medium, but I'm using real cat turb as well. So... Got, got center online now, chat. Toronto Center. Baby, booming. Clear direct. Do some on course and you're re clear to 15,000. Alright, 8,000 feet. Autopilot's on. Made that nice turn. Bring you up to the flight deck. 
Toronto, Jazz, eight, two, Sounds coming back here just a little bit. Beautiful. And we should. See downtown Toronto coming up here on our horizon. I did a sunrise flight the other day from Stockholm to Helsinki. Man, it was a beautiful flight. It is. Yes. This sim and, yeah. Sunrise, sunsets. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, All right, 10,000 feet, landing lights off, uh, uh, everything else looks good. We'll leave the uh, seatbelts on here for a little bit longer. That's the 237 right back, correct, and uh, advise one right for taxi. Roger, he's got us going up to flight level 230, yeah, nine, five, and I'm sure he'll send us over to center here in a little bit. 25775. Delta 3881, identified 3500. Turn right, direct to Ursul on course, climb flight level 230. <coughs> Excuse me. Two, three, zero, Remember, guys, if you haven't done so as well, please don't forget to uh, smash down that thumbs up button. Show the channel some love. There is downtown Toronto off our nose. Billy Bishop is right here. As soon as we get the Q400 chat. Oh, my goodness. Some Air Canada and Porter. Air Canada Jazz and Porter. Oof. Porter Ops at a Toronto City. I'm excited for that chat. You'll be watching uh, Will's first stream with the yoke? Uh, probably not. Sorry, but I don't know when. When is your first stream with the yoke? I feel like, I feel like, well, I don't know, man. I feel like, like I said, Will's literally made his branding with using that controller. I don't know. When's the Q4? No release date yet. Contact center, one, two, five, decimal seven, seven. Goodbye. One two five seven seven. Thanks for wonderful ATC today, man. Hope you have a great afternoon. Canada four four. And you too, yeah. All right. I'm sure. Thank your controllers, Chad. Control center. Good afternoon, Air Canada four zero four one four thousand. Climbing flight level two three zero. Air Canada four zero four. Control center. Good eight. Climb flight level three three zero. Climbing team three three zero. Air Canada four four. Three three zero. Will's uptick in subs uh, is high key impressive. Uh, yeah, like I said, dude, you get into the YouTube algorithm, man. You get your content out to that algorithm. Will was smart, dude, man, doing the YouTube shorts as well. The attention span, a lot of people, a lot of kids out on YouTube right now, the attention span is non-existent. So if you can, if you can cue into that, you can get them into that and coming back every single day watching the shorts. It's, 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 a, it's a key to success, man. Like I said, dude, the way that YouTube is pushing these out right now, it's it's crazy, man. If you want to grow your channel, start making start making YouTube shorts, man. It's probably the easiest way to grow your channel right now on, on YouTube. Uh, Ganesha, thanks so much for your support, man. Appreciate you. Huge enough floaties. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Incredibly kind. Welcome up in first class. I hope you enjoy your stay here. <clears throat> Custom emoji standing up in chat with that beautiful green name. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Incredibly kind. Appreciate it. There's a second yoke short now as of this morning if you're interested. Um, yeah, we'll see, man. Like I said, I don't... I, I gotta be honest with you, Will. I don't actively search your video. I don't actively search... I, don't feel bad. I'm not trying to be rude. I don't actively search any videos. The reason I've seen any of your videos is because they pop up in my recommended. Because, again, the YouTube algorithm knows that I'm a flight sim streamer, knows that I like uh, knows that I like flight sim stuff, so it ends up popping up on my... <clears throat> on my that's how I know the algorithm is working. Do you know what I mean? I can just... 11.30, midnight, 1 a.m., scrolling through YouTube, and a Captain Will short pops up. The algorithm's doing its job, man. Right in there, the the bread is in the pudding. YouTube was pushing them hard to keep up with TikTok. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Yeah. Started watching flights and streams during World Flight. I had to board your first class aircraft. Thank you, Ganesha. Appreciate it, man. World Flight was hella fun, man. I'm uh, I'm excited to see what the future holds for World Flight. Obviously, I've I've mentioned it before. I can't speak exactly what's going on right now, but. Uh, there's going to be some, obviously, some major changes that are done to to the world flight in 2024. If we can even get it done in 2024, we'll have to wait and see, but yeah. <coughs> mm. 
<clears throat> Excuse me. Is it always hazy in Toronto? Um, depends. Depends. Most of the time I find it pretty, pretty clear, to be honest with you. Um, but I guess it depends on the time of the year. Right now I could see it being like this just because the air temperature is warmer than the ground and, yeah. Nose caps likes them, uh, game controller landing shorts, exactly. Yeah. Center, Delta, Bush, Bush is on medium. Just say Bush is on medium, Will, that's all you need to say. Bush is on medium. Does anyone experience the flight factor 777 on X-Wing 12? Uh, I don't. I'm sure you can put your question and if someone knows they can answer it, but. 762 Cleveland Center is offline, surveillance services are terminated, change on route CL. When's the shared cockpit with Will? Listen, man, I don't, I don't really do the whole shared cockpit thing, man. It's not, it's not very good, if I'm being honest with you. Maybe once we have it like natively in a simulator, <clears throat> that's something that we can consider. But in its current state right now, like your controls, it's not very good, dude. It's not very good. A lot of bugs. I would say, like, I, I, I mean, one out of one out of every like five, six flights will end up going well. You know what I mean? So. Frame gen makes things jittery. Uh, can, it makes the the shadows and stuff sometimes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I'll do more street. I'll do more shared cockpit stuff when like we have native support or like an actual an actual add-on that like works. Do you know what I mean? And and is actually you know minimal bugs. I can't explain to you the amount of bugs that we had even just trying to do it, you know? So, how do you fix the frame gen issues? I don't I don't really know what issues you're talking about. <clears throat> you're saying frame gen makes things jittery. Okay, well, I, I, you're going to have to narrow it down a little bit, but yeah. Been using AMD's fluid motion frame generation on Microsoft. It's a little wonky. I've heard decent things about it. I have a friend that has an AMD card that, that runs it as well. Uh, Will said he puts his bushes on ultra. Yeah, Will does not care about FPS, man. Will will take 15 FPS landing in LAX. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, Will doesn't care about FPS. <clears throat> he puts everything on ultra. He's also running on a driver from like four years ago. His NVIDIA driver is literally from like four years ago. This guy's a freak of nature, like I said, man. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's going against the grain. He's going against the flight sim grain in almost every way. Uh, when I pan around the cockpit, it jitters. Okay, so turn some of your settings down then, Stephanie. That's definitely what's going on. Um, the, the, when you're using frame gen, do you have a 2000 series card or a lower end 3000, like a 3050, 3060 something? Uh, you're also flying on a two-year-old Airac the other day? This fucking guy, man. Don't you want to, like, upgrade any of that shit, dude? <laughs> like, it takes 30 seconds to upgrade your Airac. Download Navigraph Hub, click the update button, it does everything by yourself. Yeah, 3060, maybe turn some of your settings down, Stephanie. Um, I don't know what your settings are, I don't know what you're trying to run it at, but... Um, and then make sure you're in full screen mode, people have been saying Alt-Enter or something, I think, can also help with that. <clears throat> it's updated now, it's because say, it's, it's like a... That's, keeping your air rack up to date has got to be one of the easiest things. It's just remembering the dates that they update them. That's the biggest thing for me. Uh, hardly a captain with all these things that are date, Will. That's what I'm saying, dude. Uh, that is true, JR. Yeah. Yeah. They'll, they'll fly with 5 FPS if they have to. Just have fun. Don't really care much about the details till recently. Well, yeah, I mean, you'll notice, dude, as you want to, right? Like, I think it's okay as, like, a channel is starting out, Will, but I think you'll start to Front notice center, over the next year, over the next two years, as your sub count continues to grow, uh, people are going to expect certain things from your channel. At least that, that's been my experience. People are going to expect certain things from your channel. People are going to expect that you have the latest and greatest... You've got the best performance, you've got the best peripherals, you've got the best scenery. Uh, people don't really care. I mean, most, I don't know, man, I can't really speak. Like I said, dude, 
me personally, I think we have different viewer types. I know that we do share some viewers. We do have, yeah, we're a flight sim community. Okay, we're not that big, but I also think our our, our communities are quite different. Maybe maybe they don't really care. Maybe they don't care that you're flying into the newest third party airport or something, right? But um, yeah. Climb three five zero. Um, yeah, starting to kind of get used to the fly by wire. Got some more uh, to go though. Yeah. I still need some more updates on that flight model, man. That flare, that new flare physic is, oh boy, weird, man. Finally got my PC to fly. Can't wait to get to your level. Glad to be back uh, with your vids and learn. Chris, thank you, man. I missed that. I'm sorry, dude. Uh, thank you for your membership. I appreciate you. Back up into business class. Glad you're able yeah, to get the computer ready to rock and roll, man. Absolutely awesome. Huge enough floaties to you. Thank you. Really do appreciate it, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Great streams and watching for a while. First comment. Cheers. Carlos, thanks, man. Appreciate you. Welcome aboard, Carlos. I hope you're enjoying the content, man. Glad to hear you're enjoying the streams, and I hope I can uh, see you around the streams more often, man. Thanks for hanging out. For GA, I can deal with default airports, but pulling up to an airport in an airliner hurts my eyes. It's just, and the default, the default airliner, the default airports in Microsoft Flight Simulator, some of them, dude, they just look like apartment buildings. It's so weird. It's so weird, you know? Anytime I'm depressed, I just pull up XP72. Why is there grass on my runway video? And I'm good, dude. It's my favorite video of all time. I say it all the time, right? My favorite video of all time. All time, all time, all time. It's, it just doesn't get any better. Like, that is the most classic, like, XP72 I think I've ever seen. <laughs> it's my favorite channel, dude. Oh, man. <laughs> Team is official. What's up, mate? Good to see you, dude. Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Thank you, thank you, thank you, man. The two channels are completely different from each other. Kevin Canada is all about the realism. I, uh, I mean, can be. It depends, right? Like I said, I think, I think Will's doing a decent job at, at showcasing that you can like be absolutely ridiculous on one end, but then he also does his live streams where like he flies and vats some events and he does stuff like that, right? So kudos to him. I think he's trying to tap into both markets, which is honestly smart. Will's a smart guy as well, so I wouldn't. You know, I, th I think he is, but I think at the end of the day, I think you're going to get more clicks and likes and subscriptions from the the, the people that want to see the triple seven flying upside down and landing on an aircraft carrier. That's where most of your traffic is being generated through. You don't, you're not going to get a channel growing as quickly as it is in Will's case if you're just doing the. The, this type of stuff, streaming from one airport to the other, realistic VATSIM, ATC, right? You're not, you're not going to, that, there's no, like, trust me, as somebody who's been doing this for five, six years now, full time, uh, it's a slow roll, right? And again, I think if you're, if you're getting into flight sim for like a subscriber count or for like clout or whatever, you're in the wrong thing. Go play Call of Duty, go play Fortnite, go, go do something like that, right? <clears throat> so, yeah. You're trying to bridge the gap from casual to hardcore FS simmers. I mean, good luck to you, sir. Like I said, man, I, I think uh, I think you're onto something with the way that you're doing it. But like I said, man, I just judging for how long I've been in this community, I just I I don't I don't think you're going to convert very many people over. I think what you'll do is I think your channel is going to continue to grow, but I think that it's going to be growing with the younger crowd, the the people that like you know buy Grand Theft Auto to go fly the airplanes around and stuff like that, right? Like I said, the people that want to see you flying upside down and pulling a 360 loop-de-loop -loop to land on an aircraft carrier, that's what's going to get you clicks and subscriptions. It's unfortunate, but it's true. That's what's going to that's what's going to get your YouTube short up to half a million views, right? You landing an A320 successfully on the thousand footers into an airport isn't going to get you half a million clicks and views. So again, depends what you want to do, right? If you are searching numbers and you are searching for the views and that's the stuff that you want, then sure, man. I mean, I, I guess that that can work, right? But like I've always said, man, I would, I look at like, from my perspective, I look at like Swiss 001 and like all these other channels that do that. And I go, dude, if I had to do this to like generate an income for my life, I'd fucking hate myself. And I don't mean that in a, 
maybe they don't look at it the same way that I do. <clears throat> but if I had to load up to an airport and fly into like Courcheval in a 747 or land in God knows the shortest runway in the biggest airplane, if that was the only source of content that I could drive through that would make people click on my videos and subscribe and sponsor and donate, fuck that dude. I would honestly rather not. <laughs> I would honestly rather not create content. Do you know what I mean? But again, I'm, I'm very different. I, maybe they don't think that way. Um, I'm just judging from like what I've, I've seen right I mean all you have to do is go watch a Swiss O1 stream and just look how boring and uninterested he is man he is not there having fun it's not an enjoyable experience his streams are like an hour an hour and a half in and done again same for like Aaron Reigns right I don't know a lot about him from all of his stuff that I've seen Aaron is really good at creating YouTube shorts but if you go watch like one of his live streams dude it's the same thing these guys are just sitting there they're so uninterested half of their chat more than half of their chat are 10 year olds just baiting with like 99 cent donations doing all kinds of stupid shit asking for the most ridiculous like something that would never happen anyways that's just my opinion i don't have anything against these these people that do this if that's the content they want to produce albeit man just because it's not for me doesn't mean they're not doing a good job clearly they're doing a good job based off numbers and subscriptions and all that stuff right but at what point, like, you, are you going to sell yourself to, to that's the type of content that you have to make to, to make yourself relevant? I don't know, dude. I'd much rather build a community, stay nice and humble, get your sponsorships, have your, you know, 1,500 members that you have, and, and, and do that, man, and, and, and live that type of life. I don't know. For me, that's, that's just what I would prefer, you know? It's working. I have several subs that have learned how to fly on VATS over the last few months. I'm not doubting you, Will. I'm not, again, man, don't take what I'm saying as if, like, I'm, like, you know, I'm, I'm not doubting, man. I, like I said, I think you're doing a good job right now as far as, like, grasping the, the little Timmies, if you will, that are clicking on your YouTube shorts to then actually putting on proper live streams where, like, you're actually doing VATSIM events and you're, you're teaching people how to fly on VATSIM and fly the 737 and the fly-by-wire and all these other airplanes. But I said, man, as I said, you People don't, people wouldn't click, like, your channel wouldn't be growing at the way that it's growing if that was the sole Trump content Center, that you were producing. Uh, yeah, the reason uh, your channel is growing is because uh, you're making these wacky, silly YouTube feet. shorts and uh, people are clicking them and kids are clicking them uh, and watching them and stuff. Uh, like that, that's what it is, right? Let's be real. Let's, okay, let's be, let's be honest. Right that's, man, that's what it is. Nothing wrong with that. But I'm just saying, for, for at least you recognizing it and you're doing the right thing by having that semi-serious thing also on the side. Do you know what I mean? Because like I said, I, how, how long until you have to do more 777 landing carriers? Like you just, you're just starting out, right? So, you know, in six months from now, are you going to want to continue landing on your aircraft carriers and how many times you've done it, right? So... That was the point, though, to use uh, shorts to drive traffic. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Like I said, if you're starting out a YouTube channel now and you know, numbers are, are of importance to you. You should be making YouTube shorts. Do whatever you can to make YouTube shorts, you know, 100%. Cap, when are you going to live stream? What days are you going to do another live stream tonight? Uh, no live stream tonight. You can put exclamation point schedule in chat and that'll provide you with my weekly streaming schedule. Next live stream for me is going to be Thursday. We have one Thursday afternoon, and then we have one on Thursday evening as well. So two streams on Thursday. That'll be the next live stream. Lesefsman, good to see you. Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Probably a little Captain Canada free promo too. <laughs> JJ. I don't know, man. Aaron's live stream for him flying uh, with 100 planes around him and people trying to buzz his cockpit with a stupid Dune aircraft just to become a part of this, uh, just to become part of the live stream. Like I said, man, exactly. That's not for me. Maybe he enjoys it. I can tell you from the times that I've watched him streams. Over to Unicom. Thanks for wonderful ATC, man, and I hope you have a great afternoon here, Canada 404. Yeah. All right, one, two, two, decimal eight, over to Unicom. There we go. Yeah, sorry. Um, every time I've checked in on a Swiss 01 stream or an Aaron stream or something like that, they just seem like they are, they're there because they have to be there. They're not there enjoying their time as a flight sim community. They're there because they have to be there. I got to be honest with you, man. 
there are very few times that I've been doing this full time over the last five or six years that I've felt that I've had to be here. Sure, everybody has their ups and their downs. Um, you know, uh, maybe I wasn't feeling well. Maybe I was sick. I just, I just wasn't. You know, sure, there's things like that that can happen. But for every stream that I've clicked on, I mean, it's like I said, dude. It's basically them sitting there like, "Fuck, my, this is what my life is right now. This is what this is." It's yeah doesn't look like they're enjoying themselves that's just and that's just somebody who's been doing this for a while i think it's very clear you can like watch a content creator and you can be like that guy's not having fun <laughs> it's, it's pretty clear he's not enjoying himself today or he's not enjoying himself right yeah i haven't flown commercials since around 2016 i'm curious what if anything has changed due to covid uh, or whatnot, like going through security and boarding or anything along those lines. <clears throat> not that I know StarCept, not anymore. Obviously, right after COVID, there was some weird shit going on, but um, not anymore, man. No, nah, I mean, I've, I, I just traveled a couple months ago in November down to the U.S. and everything was normal. Everything was fine. No issues. Everything was kind of back to normal, especially down there. Everything was back to normal. Yeah. Can we see Daisy? Daisy is somewhere sleeping. We saw her the other day. I'm going to leave her just sleeping and hanging out. Can you help me with the Airbus McDo? I was playing Vatsim and I put my flight plan in the McDo because uh, I just in it it, but the controller told me I need to reroute and I just quit because I have no clue. I mean, it depends on what your reroute was. Usually, if he has a reroute, I mean, you would just go down to like your flight plan page and you could just start entering in a reroute. If he wanted you to change the arrival or something, it, it, it all depends. What I can suggest, though, honestly, Jake. If you don't understand how to do that, I, I, I really don't think you should be flying on VATSIM right now. Not trying to be rude. I'm just trying to help you in the long run because it's going to become embarrassing if, if something happens. If you, need to, if you need to change this, you need to do that. And you can't really do that because you don't understand how the aircraft works. I think maybe you should spend a little bit more time flying offline, learning the, learning the MIC do and, and all that fun stuff. And then that'll, in return, make it a lot easier for you to... Um, to know what's going on because it's you know it's got to be it's got to be you know not fun for you to have to log off the network because he told you something that you don't know um, and alternatively probably not probably not fun for the controller to have to like you know explain something or have to reroute you and you don't know how to do that you know I use default scenery with the PMGG 737-800. All of us are different levels of experience. It's all about having fun and fun. 100%. Of course, man. Of course. Like I said, that's just because, and I, I'm, I'm always adamant on this, and I always say this, just because certain content isn't for you doesn't mean that you have to be rude or disrespectful to anybody, right? Just because you, you wouldn't watch someone's content doesn't mean that you guys can't be friends and you can't share the same passion that you have for flight sim. I think that's absolutely silly. You know what I mean? Like I've met all these guys in flight sim. I've met hundreds of content creators at this point. Um, I've never had an issue with any content creator in real life. Sure, we may not agree on uh, the same simulator. We may not agree on the same add-ons. We may not agree on certain things, but it doesn't mean that like you have to be rude or disrespectful to somebody because of it, right? Remember, we're literally all here for the exact same reason. We love airplanes, we love aviation, whatever it may be, whatever, we're all, we're all here for the same reason. I could care less what you use, how you do it. If you fly with a PlayStation remote, an Xbox remote, a joystick, a, a yoke, a steering wheel, we're all here for the same reasons, man. We're, we're, all, we're all here hanging out and enjoying flight sim for what it is, right? And I think, like, as Flight Sim becomes more popular, you're going to see more type of content out there, right? You're going to see the people doing crazy things, flying triple sevens upside down and doing loop-de-loops and stuff. And that's just, that's the nature of the business, man. That's how things go. And you either have to adapt or you have to be, like, comfortable where you are. Now, like I said, thankfully for me, I don't really look at numbers anymore. I haven't looked at numbers for, like, a good two, three years now. Obviously, yes, like, I'm, I'm making sure that the you know, the channel is growing and we're, we're still getting positive subscribers every month. That's obviously important to me, but it, how fast we're going or, you know, how many donations or how many memberships and so, 
I don't, I, I really try not to pay attention to those things because they just, you know, that's the type of stuff that'll drive you crazy at the end of the day. Um, it's ridiculously difficult to start a YouTube channel and to be a, a successful YouTube channel making money every month, let alone making it like a full-time job or like a something like that, right? Um, I gotta be honest with you, like if it wasn't for like external contracts and sponsorships through the channel, I don't know if I would have been able to continue doing this full-time off of like, um, just based off of like YouTube ab revenue and stuff like that. I, I don't know if that would be like an actual... I don't know. I'd have to go and, and actually like crunch numbers and figure things out. But um, at least maybe not with like property that I'm buying now and stuff. But um, yeah. Steering wheel. Uh, I'd like to see that. I know some people that use steering wheels, man. There was some dude that was telling me he's got like a steering wheel hook up on the side and he uses it to like control the rudder and stuff. It's pretty wild, man. Pretty wild. I fly with my medium bush. See, there you go see what you mean uh i totally get it there are videos and helpful things that i could watch and i just uh watch you and other vats and flyers it's just the aggravating when i try with no luck yeah i, I got you jake man I, I feel you dude it, it it is frustrating because it's flight sim and it's because it's it's a lot to take in right man there's a lot of information there's a lot of stuff going on but uh, i promise you man like once you once you spend some time like learning the cdus and the mcdus it's going to be so much such a more rewarding experience for you um, yeah. The low bush and medium buildings, I have no screen tearing and getting 35 to 60 FPS using frame gen with an RTX 3060. Perfect. There you go. It's perfect. Greg, my man, dropping the $5 dono. Huge no floaties to you, dude. Thank you very much for the support. Appreciate you, my man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Incredibly kind. Always great to hang out with you guys as well, man. Like I said, if, if I didn't enjoy doing this, what I was doing, like I would have taken off yesterday and we wouldn't be here today streaming again. You know what I mean? I, I, I wholeheartedly mean this that, you know, I, I respect having a schedule and I think that that was like one of the biggest things that helped me grow my YouTube channel was having a set schedule that people knew exactly where to find you, what time to find you, how to find you. Um, I, uh, I, I, I fully believe that, you know, building a successful community is also built on like trust and like people can like know that like you're not Always here to nice like, you know, swindle them and can. stuff. So yeah. Appreciate you, Greg. Thank you, man. If you could send me a two to three hour flight request for an American A320 Neo. I don't think American flies A320 Neos, if you just want my honest opinion. Um, I don't think American Airlines flies them. You could just do like a regular A3, A320 route on your A320 Neo. I don't know. You'd go to Flight Radar 24. Flight Radar 24 is really good. Flightconnections.com is really good for flights. I always tell people this one Flightconnections.com flightconnections.com this is a really cool website it's free you can log up and sign in and you get like certain perks and stuff like that but what's really cool about this website is you can go to like any of the major airports around here like let's say okay let's say we just we just departed out of toronto right you want to do a flight out of toronto so you click on toronto boom it literally shows you every single airport that flies in and out of Toronto. So like all of these flights are real world flights that are happening. So like you've obviously got Toronto down to New York. All three New York airports are covered. Um, Hartford is covered. Boston, uh, St. John, Halifax. You know what I mean? So like it, it, it's crazy what you can do. Just hit the reset button and let's say, okay, you're from, you want to go from Florida. You want to go to Tampa. All right, click on Tampa International, KTPA. Boom, there you go. Those are all the flights in and out of Tampa. So it's really a cool website that kind of can allow you to do the real world ops, but also show you visibly, you're able to look at a map and be like, okay, yeah, that's a cool flight over to Houston or something, over to Austin, up to Dallas, maybe to Memphis, maybe to Fayetteville, you know what I mean? And what's cool is it'll actually show you all the blue ones are actually... Is it? I thought it... Okay, maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. I thought the blue ones were were ends in August. Okay, so it'll show you all the ones that end because they're seasonal flights as well, right? So it'll even show you like the seasonal flights like up to Louisville. There you go. Flight Connect. I do have a website. I just don't want to log in because it'll probably show my password. But honestly, if, if you're if you're somebody that's struggling to to get like routing in, like you, you really want to get some more real world routes and stuff like that in or you're want to join a VA and you're looking for like real world routes and stuff like that, flightconnections.com is an, an 
incredible resource, in my opinion. Probably one of my favorite resources. And do you know who showed me that? The one and only. He just joined chat. El Schmitty was the one that showed me that website. So huge no floaties to Mr. Schmitty. Uh, you're in a virtual airline. There you go. Virtual American. Nice. Very cool. Ecap, what do you think about the butt kicker for Microsoft? I don't know, one. I don't know if I ever... Schmitty, did the sim in Toronto have butt kickers? I can't remember. It might have had them. I don't know if I've ever used a butt kicker. We were supposed to have it set up for World Flight, but they didn't set it up in time. Yeah. Looking forward to flying commercials since going on many test flights on GA aircraft. What and when would be a respectable way to ask possibly to go up and check out the flight deck? Whew. I don't know if they let you do it anymore, Starcept. Um, you might have to do it before your flight or after your flight. After, you'd probably have a little bit better luck. You could do before your flight. Um, it depends, man. I don't think you're allowed to go in the flight deck as the aircraft is like actually in the air now, unless you have, you know, you've done some type of screening, you've done something, so. Does not think the sim in Toronto had a butt kicker. Yeah. Hmm. Can't remember either. Just found the website that cap, thanks, there you go. Sweet. Flightconnections.com. The way them clouds look in front, you remind me of X-Plane 12. <clears throat> Excuse me, sir? We've never, you'll never get this type of like front in front of you in X-Plane. Clouds look. Delicious. How beautiful that scene looks right there. They'll let you go up there. XP72 was showing pics of him in the flight deck last night when he went to Canada. Yeah, they'll let you up, but not when you're flying, Bomb Tech. That's, what, that's exactly what I was saying. Um, yeah, they'll let you, like, they'll let you go in before takeoff or after landing, sh for sure. Once everybody's deboarding or boarding the aircraft, and you say, hey, do you mind if I go in and take a quick little picture? Yeah, absolutely. No problem. But when the aircraft's actually flying, there's no way. There's no way you're getting up there now. Can confirm, uh, don't recall the butt kickers uh, at Toronto. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, no, not when you're flying. That door is locked for FAA regulations. Exactly. Yeah. That's what he was... I think that's what he was asking. Yeah. Definitely need some more practice with it. Actually have a McDo panel in my setup so I can do it right in front of me, but there's a good training for stuff uh, I can do to get better. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to... So, like off the rip Jake first and foremost if that had happened to me the first thing I would have done was ask him what waypoint he was changing right so okay proceed direct so what you would have done you would hit your direct button here and you put direct okay so that's the first waypoint if you put that into the top one here as well you go back to your flight plan the aircraft is going to proceed direct to that point so first step deal with that first deal with the first waypoint so that you can get the aircraft headed in the correct direction and then you can kind of work on the rest of the things right if it's just if it's just an arrival change that's pretty easy right just go to your destination you can go to arrivals you pick a different runway you pick a different star you, you pick a different approach via a different transition whatever right that's easy um but yeah that's what i always say like whenever you get a route change direct button first Put the first waypoint in, get them to spell it out if they need to. You can always get them on Vatsim as well to send you a DM. You can just say, hey, can you type that out to me? No problem. Most controllers aren't going to have a problem with that. They'll just send you a DM in, in, and they'll give you the the new flight plan. Or you can just ask for like an ACARS. Say, can you, can you send me the new flight plan via text? Just so that you have like a visual uh, understanding of the flight plan that you're doing, right? There's no problem with asking for these things. I mean, hell, we asked for a certain approach, right, into Toronto, and they accommodate it for him. And if they can, like, if it doesn't make his life a, a pain in the ass, I'm sure they'll, they'll accommodate that. You know what I mean? Never mind. That looks nothing like X-Plane. 
I was gonna say, man, I don't know, I don't know what X-Blade mod you've been using, man, but can you send me over some links, because this looks nothing like it. To the landing at YUL in the jump seat of a 787 as a new, personally, the captain of the airline, I can't say. Uh, it was an amazing experience. Yeah, absolutely, Kareem. I have a few buddies that fly, um, that fly, I have a cousin, actually, that just started flying, uh, for Canadian North, he's flying the ATR 72 and 42 for them, and he actually sent me a message a couple of weeks ago and said, uh, I spoke to the chief pilot and he said, he said, you can come flying with me up in like the, up in the jump seat, um, only if we're doing cargo, as long as there's no passengers. So he does like, they do the combis, the split cargo and, and passengers. Sometimes they don't take any passengers, it's just cargo, um... So I'm going to try and do that. I'm going to try and do that in the spring or the summertime. Go all the way up north and fly uh, and fly with him up there. I think that would be really cool. Uh, SF Aviation, take care, my friend. Have a great Tuesday afternoon, and hopefully I will see you on Thursday, mate. I think we're going to do some Boston ops on Thursday. Boston. It's been a while since we've been in and out of Boston, so we're going to go Boston to somewhere. I was thinking Boston to Baltimore, maybe Boston to D.C., we haven't done Boston to DC routing in a while, so. All right, we should be back. If you're having audio issues, refresh the stream. Refresh. Refresh the stream if you're having audio issues. Apologize, I still don't know what's causing that. I almost feel like it's an NVIDIA driver thing. I don't I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't think we're ever going to get to it, but yeah. Take a jump seat to fly in a moose jaw, eh? No, he's more up in like Iqaluit and like, though like real far, like Arctic North, Schmitty. Yeah. Love flying into Boston, best waypoint, Sea Hag. I don't know if I have the Sea Hag. I thought my laptop speakers were exploded. Apologize. Got to get professional Les O'Reilly over here, Mr. Uh, Mr. Voice Professional. I should probably have some engine anti-ice on. These are some pretty gnarly clouds. Uh, landing lights are on. We're just coming through 10,000 feet now. Speed's rolling back to 250. Uh, I'm going to go auto brakes low. We're going to arm our ground spoilers. Any ATC in Montreal today? Unfortunately not. New. No. No ATC in Montreal. Montreal doesn't come on as much. You have a lot better chance of getting ATC uh, flying in to Toronto, in and out of Toronto. Toronto's online quite a bit. Uh, it was, I was on the ground actually when he sent me the flight plan. He said he was going to change it and sent it to me the waypoints through VPI. Well, that's not too bad then, Jake. I mean, then you could just go and like, you know, you could manually go and delete everything, right? So if you go to flight plan, you just go to clear, you can manually clear out everything if it's if it's an issue, right? You can delete your arrival, or delete your departure, delete your arrival, and then manually clear all of those things out there as well, so. Hello, you're landing in my home airport. Tyrex, good to see you, man. Boston to Connecticut? We're like Bradley International, Ryan? KBDL? It's been a while since we've been to Bradley, man. Holy. Yeah. For the low price of $59.99, you could have AI ATC. No subscription required. <laughs> do -dun -dun. Cap, do the NVIDIA installer and uninstall the NVIDIA HD audio drivers. Uh, I think you need those, don't you, JJ? Uh, I don't think we're doing flight sim this Thursday afternoon, evening, evening, sorry, Vine. I think we're doing air sim airport again or whatever the hell it was called, airport sim. I think we're doing that on Thursday evening stream. Yeah. Okay, JJ, I'm going to hit you up afterwards. Go to the NVIDIA installer and uninstall the NVIDIA HD audio drivers. All right, I'm trusting you on this one. Now, hold on though, JJ, do I uninstall it on the game PC or the stream PC? Audio is through the game PC, but it picks everything up to that one. You need those drivers? I thought so too. I, I don't know how it works with the, with the capture card and stuff. I don't know. 
Went to delete it, and it was doing good, but I accidentally did something. My whole flight plan was gone, and I think now I put the waypoints in, but I'm still learning. Yep, absolutely, Jake. Nothing wrong with that, man. Nothing wrong with that. I don't remember that cool airport on the river in Connecticut. Uh, Connecticut. Oh, that was the uh, where we did the harbor visual. Hmm. What's this about audio drivers on the stream PC? JJ is telling me to delete the... NVIDIA, to run the NVIDIA installer and uninstall the NVIDIA HD audio drivers. Because he's saying that's what's causing my microphone to go all crazy static every now and then. Portland, Maine. That's the one. Thank you, Brendan. That's the one. If you use the NVIDIA audio on the stream PC, then don't. That is possible. Easy enough to do. Okay. Okay. Wouldn't that, like, cause issues, though? As far as, like, audio? I don't know. Snow on the ground! It is, yes. There is some snow here in Montreal. Oh, it's a little bit sparse. Some places. I actually really like what they've done with the snow. It, it actually looks pretty real. Instead of just, like, a blanket of white like it has been the past couple years, this is, uh, this is far more realistic, where you have, like, little patchy areas with like open, you know, where there's trees and parks, it's a little bit more open and green, but then you see the snow on top of the rooftops and like around buildings and stuff. There still needs to be some work because there's still obviously places like this where it looks kind of weird, but like that right there, that looks awesome. That looks like pretty realistic. And like the way that it is on like the houses and stuff like that and like the fields like this, that looks, that looks real. That looks top tier. You just have to kind of dial it in a little bit. Still a little bit hit and miss around some places, but in my opinion, this looks way better than it did uh, like last year when everything was just, everything was covered in snow and it wasn't like patchy snow like this, right? It was just one clear, like just a layer of like white paint was dumped all over. A little bit weird. Um, intercepting the runway, 3,000 feet at Sloka. I'm going to go 3,000 feet. I am going to proceed direct to Sloka once we reach Maxod. Not very much snow in Montreal? No, there's not, man. It's not very much snow. I mean, there's still a little bit of snow on the Ottawa side, but um, more than here, that's for sure. But Ottawa usually gets more snow than, than Montreal and Toronto. Alright, proceed direct to Sloka. Insert. Aircraft will make a right turn. Turn on our LS switch. Going to be intercepting at... Uh, I'm going to descend at about 300 feet per minute down to 3,000 feet. Tech, look at that. That looks good. That looks fantastic. If they could make everything look like that, they're definitely on to something. That's for sure. FS22, we're going to be lit. Hopefully, man. Yeah. HDMI audio out from the stream PC isn't being used. Um, no, because it's all done through the audio mixer, Dan. I think. I don't know, man. Just flew to Newark a few days ago, and the snow looks exactly the same spot on. It looks beautiful. Yeah, it looks really good. Real good. All right, approach phase should be already active, which it is good. Remember, we used to fly with Jeff side by side. Is something like that still possible, having two pilots online together? It is bracket, but it's very buggy. That's kind of the problem right now with these programs. We need like some native support. If we had like native support, it would be a lot better. There's talks that Microsoft 2024 will have native support in the simulator for like shared flight and stuff like that. So uh, yeah. We have one meter of snow. That's a lot. That's a lot of snow. I wonder if we've got a meter this year. We definitely don't have a meter because the weather's been like up and down and a little bit weird, but. Shared cockpit is planned for 2024. See, there you go. Great news. Chat, remember, if you haven't done so, don't forget to smash down that thumbs up button. There's uh, over 300 people watching right now. Theoretically, we should have 300 likes, right? Everybody's here because they love watching the content. Everybody's here because they enjoy flight sim. So if you are enjoying it, please do me a huge solid. Don't forget to smash down that thumbs up button. Loke Star is captured, 2-4 left. Beautiful, we're at alt cap now as well. 
3,000 feet. I'm going to arm our approach switch. Wonderful. And as that glide slope comes about one diamond, I'm going to start putting some flaps. We're at perfect clean speed right now. I've been trying to do a better job at leaving the Airbus in managed speed mode. I've been getting a lot of slack lately by people saying, Cap, you don't need to do speed. It'll hold it automatically. So I've been, I've been trying to do a better job of not doing, just leaving it in managed mode. We're one dot above. Let's go flaps one. Because you see how it kept it at clean right there, 210 knots, and then watch. Even though I've got this, it won't go below S speed. You'll hear the engine start to pick up again. Watch. Finally, after flying Airbus for eight years, I'm understanding it. Watch. The engines will spool up, and it'll keep us at S speed now. See? Keeps us at S speed until gear is down, I think, or something like that. So, yeah. The pros use selected speed all the time. Yeah, but not the YouTube pros. Come on now. Gear down. Flaps two. <laughs> what is S speed? Uh, slat, I think is what that stands for. Slat speed. If you watch Airbus videos, they take it out of manage mode all the time. So if you do manual speed, that's absolutely correct. It's okay. You know, man, the YouTube pilots know more than the real world pilots. Come on now. Come on now, guys. We should have to explain this. <laughs> Flaps three. Ground spoilers are armed. Auto brake is set. We're actually, okay, for real this time, for real this time, we're going idle reverse thrust. For real this time, okay? For realsies. Because we want to go all the way down to alpha four. Hell, even down to alpha whatever this is. One, alpha two. All right? So for real this time. Through 160 knots, flaps full. Beautiful winds right now. Let's get some lights on. Good, good, good. Engine anti-ice can come off as well. Good. Let's go ahead and start our recording. Look at this scene right now in front of us. This is beautiful, chat. Very nice. We are recording. Justy cam is on. Idle reverse thrust this time, guys, okay? Thank you. My airplane. Enjoy the arrival, friends. On the ground. It's very hazy. I don't reverse right to the gate. <laughs> I don't know if SOP would be happy with that on us. The chief operating pilot would probably get upset. One thousand. reminds me of like a late afternoon arrival into Canada. Snow like that, the sun blinding almost. This looks so good. Because I'm upset. Winds just shifted there a little bit. Four knot crosswind now. No problemo. Perfectly on the 500. approach path. 500 feet. And look at that building, the way it's covered with snow on the roof like that. That's oh, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. 400. 300. 100 above. 200. Maverick with the 10 bones. Thank you, dude. Appreciate you as always, man. Minimum. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Continue. 100. 50. 40. 30. 20. Retard. 5. Reversers. Nose down gently. 226. Ain't no way, chat. Decelerating. Fuck, I forgot idle reverse. God damn it, I did it again. Okay, it's fine. I'm uh, kicking off auto brake. We're gonna roll it on out. I did it again. God damn it, dude. <laughs> I can't help myself, Chad. 
I can't help it. I love the sound of it. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> it's okay. We'll get it at some point. We'll get it. I'm, I'm keeping this rolling, chat. I'm, keep, I'm keeping it rolling. Keep it rolling. Keep her going all the way down. 9 point sat, 0.97 on the G226. Yep, that's accurate. I don't know. Felt real weird. When you hear five pitch nose up, so feel like you're hovering, let's say get the 20 foot per minute. Nah, I don't want to do that. I'd rather keep it realistic. To me, that was like a perfect realistic landing. We'll look at the replay. I still think 225 was a little bit much on that, but or whatever it was. Either way, man, it was still a great landing. For the weather, for the uh, the views, it was absolutely perfect. I am, uh, I am completely okay with that arrival, regardless of the foot per minute reading on that one. Let's go, flaps and spoilers clean, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Montreal. Uh, we, uh, we're going to gate one. Uh, terminal one, gate one. No. Air Canada. Love your cap, get this butter. Hey, thank you, man. Appreciate you, dude. Mutual floaties to Mr. Midnight Maverick. Thank you, thank you, thank you, man. All right. Landing lights are off. Nose light over to taxi. Runway turn offs off. Strobe lights off. Wing lights off. AP master start switch is on. We'll stop the clocks here on the flight time. 55 minutes. So we're 11 minutes shorter than uh, on the way back. Yeah, performance at this airport is not very good. Not very good at all, man. I'm getting 45 fake frames. Not very good. Do you remember when you used to float down half the runway just to get the butter and X-plane? Oh, the good old days, man. Oh, this guy's pushing back. That's not going to work. Okay. Uh, that's why you always check your surrounding areas before pushing back, chat. Right there. One-on-one on Vatsim. I'm just going to disconnect so I won't get in his way. I don't really care. We're done with Vatsim for the day anyways. Um, did better than the plane that came in uh, for the nosedive. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's easy to recognize GSX under pushing back. Yes. Yeah. You show the joystick sensitivities. Minus 29, minus 29, 2% dead zone, 20% reactivity. Uh, Mike, if you're in the Phoenix Discord, it's exactly... I have the controls set the exact same way that uh, Phoenix says they should be set. So I have it. Right, there is our gate. Really wish uh, YYZ would get an update. It's getting one, man. Fly Tampa has already confirmed that uh, Toronto will be receiving a major update sometime uh, early New Year is what they said. So we're still in early New Year kind of, right? But yeah. Alrighty. Ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Montreal. We're going to leave our block time running for like an extra minute because we started it a little bit late on our pushback. Well, I promise you, chat, at some point this week, we'll actually remember block time and do it properly. I promise. Alrighty, there we go. Zero's on the board. Upstairs, EPU's on. EPU bleed is on. Engine number two is off. Engine number one is off. Red beacon light is off. Seatbelt signs are off. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Montreal. We'll request the deboarding. We'll turn that down because that gets real loud and annoying real quick. And there we have it, friends. Back on the ground. Gate Alpha 1, just like the real flight. What a great day of flying. Seriously, very happy with that one. Had a beautiful arrival into Toronto. I still think that was a great arrival. I'm going to question the landing rate on that one. I don't really care, but I'm still questioning the landing rate on that one. 097 on the G226 firm, exclamation point. Four degrees up, one degrees to the left. I still think that's like four to five degrees on a 320. It's perfectly fine for your flare. Winds were 194 at four knots. Touchdown at 131 knots. We'll see. We'll see what she looks like on the replay. Regardless, I'm happy with it anyways. It's not like they sit there after the real world flights and they go, hmm, man, I could have had that one a little bit smoother. All right, good to go. MK Studios or BM World Montreal? Um, 
I don't know about the BM world. Uh, I, I've only ever owned the MK Studios. Visually looking at it, MK Studios wins almost every time. Visually, MK does a better job texturing, modeling, whatever. I don't know. I can't really speak to performance. BM World kind of sucks on performance as well. So, so do the uh, uh, MK Studios sometimes as well. I think this airport definitely needs some more, um, so, some some help. I don't know. The sim update beta it, it might be better. You might get better performance in it. I, I don't know. Um, I think I'm going to opt into the beta this weekend. I'm still unsure, but I'm I'm gonna jump into it so yeah what is landing rate mod called and is it free it is free it's called landing rate monitor you can get it by putting exclamation point lrm in chat and nightbot will provide you with a command to landing rate monitor chat did we reach 300 likes on today's stream we did thank you all so much for your support truly do appreciate it again before you guys are heading out if you haven't done so don't forget to smash down that thumbs up button thanks everybody for being here today truly do appreciate it hope you guys enjoyed today's live stream it was fun to uh, head back to canada do some real world air canada ops for you guys today montreal toronto and back we haven't done this sector in quite a while this is one of my favorite sectors this is like my um, almost as good as my test sector of Ottawa to uh, Ottawa to Mon uh, sorry Ottawa to Toronto, which is about ten or fifteen minutes shorter. Ottawa is just uh, down the road here from uh, Montreal. Um, cool. I don't know what we're doing on Saturday yet. No, sorry, I do. We're gonna go with Boston. We're gonna go somewhere out of Boston. I'm thinking maybe, like I said, Boston to DC. That's a that's a nice run. I don't know who does that. I think American Airlines does that, so we can fly American A320, uh, Boston to DC for maybe some River Visual. Mm -hmm. Fingers crossed. A nice Saturday River Visual. I think that's what we're gonna do on Saturday. Sunday. We're going to do our community fly-in, so don't forget about that one, chat. If you guys are around this weekend, Sunday we're flying, pulling out our GA airplanes, and uh, we're going to do some flying. I think we're going to do, like, Palm Springs to, like, Santa Ana, or I don't know, something like that, somewhere along there. Go do some circles over top of LAX and kind of mess around. Maybe go buzz the tower at LAX and do some stuff. So Sunday we got our community fly-in. That's going to be good. And then on Monday, I don't know. <laughs> so that's the plan. Uh, so uh, wait, no. Thursday, we're going to do... Sorry, I messed all this up. I thought we were Thursday today. My bad. Thursday, we're doing Boston to somewhere. Saturday, I don't know what we're doing. Sunday, we're doing GA flying. Monday, don't know yet either. There we go. Now I got it down. Okay. Um, so that's the plan. Like I said, on Thursday, I would count for uh, Boston to um, D.C., that's a great one as well. So, And we haven't done GA flying in a while, so that'll be fun as well. All right, cool. Let me go ahead and go to GSX. Let's go ahead and uh, restart the Kutal script. Let's close this. Close all of our doors. Remove the GPU and the chocks and all that fun stuff. We're going to go to panel state. I'm going to get the aircraft in an active state. Good. We're going to put flaps all the way full. GSX is yelling at me. Don't worry about that. Who cares? Boston, Miami, maybe that's a little bit too long for a Thursday stream. That, that might be a good weekend stream though. Uh, fun times with Ray and Nancy. That could be a, that could be a good weekend stream though. Surprise us to hell with all this planning. <laughs> that's usually what happens anyway. It's hilarious. You can actually see the relay in there. I wonder, is this modeled or is that just a picture? I wonder if that's why the performance is so weird. Is, is this actually, oh man. Okay. It is. That's why the perform... Okay, interesting. I wonder if they offer a way to turn this off. I guarantee you this is why... Per Chat, we're going to Timmy's, bud. Look at the fucking lineup. Where is this to the bathroom? Oh, okay. I was going to say, that's actually kind of hilarious. But this is why performance sucks at this airport, by the way. I didn't know that it was fully modeled and animated interiors like this. Uh, I did not know that it was like this. <laughs> Why is it always the women bathroom that's so full? It's not like that, by the way. I've been to Montreal many times. I've never seen a lineup to use the washroom. Um, there's an Air Canada lounge, though. Oh, shit. Where the hell was that? There we go. Air Canada lounge right in there. Um, but yeah, I, I wonder if there's a way to turn off these interiors. I bet you if there was, you'd gain probably an extra 5 to 10 FPS with all these people and all these... Oh, man. Yeah, this is brutal. 
I mean, it looks cool and everything, but I just wish I could turn this off because I would never, ever, ever use this. Um, but that would be why it, it is probably broken. Um, okay, flaps are back full and that's good. Let's go ahead and hit our replay tab, stop our recording, and we'll go ahead and hit the play button. Good. We'll bring this all the way forward now. Watch it from right about... That should be good right about there. Good, we'll pin that. All right, cool. Let's take a look on the outside. Let's see how this one went down. Let's see if if we actually vote this a two. What the hell did we say it was, Chad? A two something? What was it? Two twenty six? Yeah. Those folks at Taco Bell. I don't think there's any Taco Bell in the in the airport. Might be. Maybe they, maybe they got it outside the airport. I don't know. All right. Let's see, Chad. Two twenty six. Was it a two twenty six? Chat, we'll have your verdict here in a second. 226,000 footers. Don't make me take the sunglasses off. That was as buttery smooth as buttery smooth was butter. I almost wasn't able to say that. Ain't no way, chat. Ain't no way that was a 226. I'm sorry. Listen, you know I'm real with you guys. If I smash and I smash it, ain't no way that was a 226. That was buttery smooth. Like, literally buttery smooth. Runway upslope? Could have been. Could have been, man. But, like, I guess I don't think we could have done that any better. Look at the 1,000-footers coming by. Ready? 1,000-footers down before the 15 hundos. Come on, man. I don't, something's glitching the hell out over here too. That was, I don't know, chat. That was, uh, that was pretty damn buttery if I don't say so myself. Let's watch from this view here. Get a nice behind the wing or behind the tail view. I'm pretty sure that was like perfect. My replay is grayed out when I got a VR headset on. Hmm, that's weird. Can't say much about that one, but. Beautiful flare. Just cut the power as soon as we flare. A little bit of decrab right there. Come on. Come on, man. That was absolutely perfect, chat. I ain't buying it, chat. I ain't buying it. All right, everybody. That's going to go and wrap up today's live stream. want to thank all my mods, my donators, my sponsors. Thank you all so much for everything that you do for the channel. Without you guys here, none of this would be possible. Seriously, thank you all for the support. Thank you for all the donations today. Thank you to all the gifted members. Uh, a huge shout out once again to Mr. Midnight Maverick dropping that donation on short final there. Thank you for the support, man. I truly do appreciate it. Guys, again, one last time, if you did enjoy it, don't forget to smash down that thumbs up. Next live, from, from, next live stream from me will be on Thursday afternoon. We are going to be live from Boston. Boston, hopefully into D.C. I think we're going to go Boston to D.C. We might go somewhere else, but Boston to D.C. was screaming. We haven't done that one in a while, and I love that little routing. So it's another great, would be another great stream like today. So um, that will be Thursday uh, afternoon stream, and then Thursday evening stream, I think we're going to jump back into uh, Airport Sim. I think we're going to do that again. We might do some multiplayer Airport Sim this Thursday, though, so we'll see. We may have some help on the ramp helping us out and making things a little bit easier. So Thursday afternoon, plan for uh, Boston to D.C. If you do want to join, please do feel free. We're going to be back in the Airbus. Come on, dude. That was a perfect landing. Absolutely perfect landing. Uh, we're going to be back in the Airbus. We're going to be doing some American Airlines ops. I believe American is the only one that operates from uh, Boston to D.C. So figure it out. To everybody else that cannot donate using a monetary value, but donates with your time, your effort, flying with me on VATSIM, smashing down that thumbs up button. I want to thank you guys just as much. Thank you, everybody, for being here today. Really do appreciate it. Again, apologize I couldn't be live yesterday uh, for our usual schedule, but I wanted to make it up to you today with a remake stream, if you will. Uh, everybody, enjoy your Tuesday. Enjoy your Wednesday. And I look forward to seeing you guys all in uh, Boston on Thursday. Again, if you do want to join, please feel free. Usually we get ETC in Boston, so hopefully we get some ETC as well. It'll be a great one. Happy landings, my friends. See <laughs>